everybody, hello, 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 hi, hi, hello, hi, welcome, so good to see all of you, what a delight, hey, are you guys drinking tonight, huh, you drinking, yeah, I used to work in radio, everybody, that's called Foley work, and you have to join a different union, that's true in states that aren't Virginia. All right, hi, everybody. Welcome, everyone, except Elena, who's on the show. Uh, it's funny, there were a lot more people up here when I started. And then they said, oh, here comes Jacob with his bullshit again, and they left. Um, what a night. What an experience. What a place for us all to be together. You know, the last time we were here, it was election night. And everyone kept coming up to me and asking me about the election for some reason. I dismiss it now because I was wrong. They keep asking me about the election, and they say, what's going to happen? And I say, we're not going to know for a week. I was wrong. Next time my wife says, you never say you're wrong, I'm going to show her this video, Silver. I'll give you $10 tomorrow. We're, I was wrong. Lynn, I was wrong. Uh, we live in a new America. Elena, don't laugh too loud. That's going to be illegal soon. Uh, we live in a new America. I know that it's uh, tough for some people. Uh, Pat's happy. Pat loves it. Uh, Mike Marr pretends he doesn't love it, but come on, let's be honest, he's over 70, he loves it. Um, all right, we're just gonna, we're gonna move on though. Uh, don't all these jokes work. I voted, uh, I did vote, I voted for Hung Kao. He was the Republican Senate candidate with the funniest name. So I voted for him. I mean, guys, honestly, just from a strictly comedy perspective, saying I'm represented by Hung Kao. That's worth it. That's pretty good, right? But he lost. And so I tried to look into it and I said, why did he lose? And I found there was a Senate debate right before the election where he, they were talking about military recruitment and he said, I want to get people who would rip other people's guts out and eat them. Which is fine for me, for our nation's professional murderers. The problem is, he was talking about the Navy. And the Navy might be the only branch of the military where you are guaranteed not to run into enemy soldiers. There's the Space Force and then the Navy. As far as I know, we're not doing a lot of boarding enemy ships these days. Really just drone bombing them out of existence. And there's not a lot of chancy guts on a drone mission. As far as I know, but to be honest, I'm not read in. That's a joke for people who are in the service, which is none of you pussies. Uh, what else do I have? I have to get through one joke just to be a petty, vindictive dickhead. Um, Kamala Harris, uh, Kamala Harris, I saw on MSNBC, they said she ran a flawless campaign. I love that. I'm gonna adopt that. I mean, she lost, but it was a flawless campaign. We can all agree on that. I'm gonna take that in my own life. Uh, hey guys, you might not like this joke, but it's a flawless joke. <laughs> a few minutes before we started this show, I told my wife, I was, she's getting flawless oral. <laughs> she said, you're not even home. I said, that's too results focused. It's the lead up to the oral that matters. And it was flawless. Flawless oral. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Chris Sipple's here or not. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen, Trump started announcing his cabinet picks, some controversial cabinet picks. Uh, first he picked Tulsi Gabbard to be his director of national intelligence. I was actually excited about that one. I think that's a good one. That shows that Trump is maturing. He's learned a little from his first administration. Uh, people have said that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset, uh, which is good. That's, a, that's an improvement, because after his 2016 election, Stephen Colbert said he, that Trump himself was Putin's cock sleeve. So cock sleeve to Russian asset, that's pretty good. Uh, my only problem with her is that she's not an American. She's from Hawaii? Excuse me? Can she even handle this job? She's got to read the reports from all the intelligence agencies. That's a lot of email. What if she thinks it's all spam and then she eats it? I 
I know Chris wrote that one, but if he did, he can't use it anymore. Uh, for Attorney General, he's, uh, he's nominated Matt Gates as Attorney General. I, I also don't mind that pick. That guy's got the right look to be Attorney General, I think. Look, if I were committing federal crimes, and then you told me that gay Dracula has a hard on for me, and he's checking me out, I would admit to whatever you wanted just to get him off my case. Matt Gates looks like gay Dracula. Everyone pull out your phones and Google Matt Gates. We'll all we'll cut forward 30 seconds and you've cut out the laughter. Because he looks like gay Dracula. I said Eddie Munster. I know, and Eddie Munster is a better reference, but I have Dracula callbacks, you piece of shit. Now shut up. People also have a problem with Matt Gates because apparently he had sex with a teen. Which, uh, you know, normally we look down upon, but he is a gay Dracula, and with RK taking over Health and Human Services, can you blame a guy for looking for fresh food? <laughs> RK's got some crazy ideas. <laughs> I have a lot of tags I was going to cut out of this, but now I'm going to do them all just to spike No, I'm not. Uh, RK's got some crazy ideas. He wants to take fluoride out of the water. He wants to get chemicals out of the food. I think he has some thoughts about vaccines. Honestly, my opinion, do it. Why not? This country's boring now. Do it. Let's find out what happens. Right? What's the worst that can happen? I'm vaccinated. If RFK is wrong, I'll be fine. Oh, I wrote, uh, audience laughs hysterically right there. You guys, you got that? Uh, but guys, but seriously, if, uh, you can still vaccinate your kids if RK gets in. Um, just don't let the government find out or gay Dracula will get you. All right, Chris can have all of it. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll end with this. I like... That was flawless. I know. Thank you. Flawless. Uh, I like little dogs. I like little dogs. I like when I'm out and about and I see people walking little dogs and they're pulling against their leashes very hard and they're pulling and they're walking sideways. They're pulling against their leash so hard because they're like just like yanking. And if that were me, guys, if that were me, right? Like if, if I were that dog, if I were that little dog and I was yanking across and I was like standing sideways because I was yanking across your leash so hard. If that were me, if I was that dog, if that, if I was the dog that was in that situation right then and there, if that were me, you know what I would do? I would spend a lot of my time looking for a wizard because I am a human being. And if I were a dog in that situation, that would mean that I had been magicked upon. And I would like to resolve that situation and get back to being a human being if that were me. If that were me, that's what I would do. Okay? Okay? Thank you. That's where the end of my set. Hey, Addison, welcome. We just did a ton of fun Virginia Beach stuff. Addison, you're from the beach, right? And you're from the beach? Yeah, you guys like to uh, eat each other's guts, right? That's like a big thing in the Navy, you guys eat each other's guts? Very cool. Navy's the most accepting of, by the way, now that Trump's won, everyone's like, hey, masculinity's come back, we could be men again. And they have football players and UFC fighters dancing to the YMCA? I don't know about that. I don't know you guys, but my version of masculinity was never us all dancing together to the YMCA. I mean, it's a form of masculinity, but not the kind I want in my father. I'm just kidding. My father did his service. He fucked a lady and I'm here. Ew. I don't like that. I'm old school. I like to imagine my mother's never been fucked. Boy, for 2009, I'd have five tags of that joke, but I'm not gonna do them now. But in 2025, I'm gonna do them. You better believe. Because they don't have a choice anymore. My wife said, don't do that joke. And I said, shut up, bitch. <laughs> shut up, bitch. Yeah. It's over for you. You should have voted for Kamala or whatever her name was. All right. Uh, guys, we're going to move on. Your next comic. I would say, this is his first time here, everybody. I'm very excited. Put your hands together for Zuri Johnson. What's going on? What's up, people? First time here at 
Home sweet home comedy. How y'all doing today? Yeah, if you ready to hear some comedy, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all look good, man. Y'all look smart. All y'all that went to college, any of y'all go to college? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I see a bunch of PhDs in this crowd. Y'all look poor, hopeless, and desperate, man. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, man. Y'all look good, man. Y'all look good. I love doing stand-up, man. Feels good to be on stage. Every time I do stand-up, people look at me like I'm not supposed to be here. Like, why is Shannon Sharp on stage telling jokes? <laughs> when did Booker T start doing comedy? I ain't know Booker T did comedy. But anyway, moving on. You know what I can't stand? I hate being late. Anybody hate being late? Yeah. You know, it ain't never my fault why I'm late. It's always somebody else's fault. Like, why we gotta wait for the ducks to cross the street? It makes me sick. It ain't never just one duck. It's always two, three, four, five. It's a group of them fucking ducks. Taking their sweet ass time to cross the street. And then I get to work like my boss mad at me. <laughs> Why was you late to work? Well, the duck dynasty had to cross the street. <laughs> Sorry, Daffy Duck and Donald. They had to make their way across the street. Moving on though, speaking of being late again. I hate people that get special. Damn, what's going on down there? I hate people that I hate people that get special traffic privileges. I hate that. Like, why the police get to run red lights and shit? First of all, no, not even police. Why do funeral possessions get to run red lights? What's the rush? Hey, now what's the rush? He's already gone. Take your sweet time. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Hold on. Gotta make sure I remember what I had. Good thing we got a smartphone, all my notes is digital now. Shout out to Steve Jobs. What? You know what I was gonna say, yeah. What did the left butt cheat say to the right butt cheat? What? Together, we can stop this shit. <laughs> Unity, man. Everybody wanna be split up, Democrat, Republican, fuck that. Come together like two butt cheeks and have unity. Moving on. Joke number five. <laughs> Everybody in here that work out, clap. Damn, one person, shit. Well, I'm gonna tell this joke anyway. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I do multiple things for a living. Sometimes I do insurance, sometimes I do personal training. The thing about being a personal trainer, people get mad at you when they don't lose weight. Like it's my fault. Like I, you come to the gym, you do push-ups, pull-ups, squats. But if you go home and eat cupcake cookies and pies, that ain't my fucking fault. That's your fault. You need to have more discipline. What y'all do for a living? Retired. You retired? Man, that sounds easy. <laughs> sounds easy? Sounds fun, too. You don't yeah. do shit all day. It's hard. It's hard? What's the hardest thing about retirement? Uh, uh, taking two or three naps a day. Man, sounds like the life. <laughs> Moving on, though. <laughs> but like I'm saying, personal trainer, people get mad at you when they don't lose weight. But the thing is though, people make excuses why they can't make it to the gym. I got this one client I used to have, he used to always come with an excuse every day. He said, I couldn't make it to the gym because I stubbed my toe. His toe. It was arm day. You didn't even need your toes. You just need your arms. And I got another, <laughs> I got another client, right? He come up with excuses. His excuses top the cake than the last excuse. He told me one time he couldn't take it to the gym. He couldn't make it because he was stuck in traffic. Stuck in traffic, excuse me. I said, all right, you stuck in traffic. Tell me where you at and we can just reschedule. He's like, man, since I'm being honest, I'm in the line at Popeye's right now, <laughs> waiting on my chicken sandwich. I said, chicken sandwich? Popeyes? Being late to your personal training session for Popeyes, it's like being late to an Alcohol Anonymous meeting because you had to stop at the liquor store. It's just unacceptable. But since you're at Popeyes, bring me back a 12 piece and we'll let this shit slide. Hey, y'all. I'm Zuri. It's good to be here at home, sweet home, first time. Yeah, nice crowd, nice crowd. Yeah, get up for Zuri, everybody. Yeah.
Yeah, Missouri. Boy, I've never been more nervous than when a black comic looked out into the room and said, y'all hate being late? <laughs> Maybe. I'll tell you what I don't hate running the light. <clears throat> Zuri did not run the light. That's a comment on every other black comic you'll see tonight. Uh, oh, never mind. That's just a comment on Zuri. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, Zuri, I like that Zuri said, sometimes I do insurance, sometimes I do personal training, which is exactly the sort of non committance that got me to get insurance. I was like, you know what? I need some certainty in my life. I need something that I can depend on. Uh, all right, guys, your next comedian. He was not here the first three times he was called, but now he is here. And he has the most phenomenal, the most outstanding, the most unbelievably funny joke about Trump's cabinet picks that I have ever waited to hear. And I hope you guys are ready to have your socks, your pants, but your shoes as well, your underwear, and maybe even, if you're wearing it, a wife beater blown off by your next comedian, because he's going to get you naked. Right? Not a good sign. Your next comedian, all the way from our United States Army, put your hands together for Sergeant, Master Sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant. You're going to give me any indication here. You're a colonel. Just, oh, just sergeants, put your hands together for Sergeant, delete this, Chris Joyner. Yeah. Socks blown off, shoes blown off, underwear blown That's just entering a ditty party. <laughs> no, uh, for Veterans Day, I did get thanked a lot. Uh, when you like thank your veterans now, you don't have to tip them for gratuity. That's the only service you don't have to do that for. Uh, your gratuity is already included in the taxes. Um, Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> I like that! <laughs> it's, a, it's about as American as your shoes. Uh, <laughs> now, everyone's seen that Trump's been picking nothing but white people for his administration or cabinet. Uh, they're whiter than the fucking uh, cocaine that tr uh, Hunter Biden did in the White House uh, bathroom. Uh, now, there is a little diversity in... Um, Trump's cabinet, Elon Musk, is from South Africa. <laughs> uh, no, uh, RFK was able to enter the White House finally. Uh, Kennedy in the White House uh, isn't the number one person on the CIA's hit list. But I think we do need a president uh, about as open-minded as JFK was. <laughs> it's mind-blowing, right? <laughs> Now, um, did you guys see that North Korea, uh, their soldiers are now compromised? North Korea sent soldiers uh, to the Russian line to help out Russia, and it's the first time that they were able to get internet access. And you know what they did with that access? They looked up Pornhub. Now, they, now they're compromised. So if all America has to do is give Ru North Korea uh, access to the internet, that's the easiest way to defeat them. Now wait till they see our nuke video, Two Girls, One Cup. Um, yeah, those Trump cabinet jokes were not that funny. Don't let them lie. Ours <laughs> were different. Yes. Uh, I feel like the Make-A-Wish is a scam. It's because, like, they're like, what's your, what's your wish? My wish is to live. Yeah, sorry, we can't fulfill that order. Would you like to meet John Cena, though? <laughs> no, um... Uh, P. Diddy's mansion uh, is actually up for grabs, but there's no investors. I thought there would be investors because that place is an oil mine. Uh, oh, I fucked that up. <laughs> it's an oil gold mine. Sorry, God. What? Sorry, God, I like it. Okay. <laughs> I saw where you were going, I liked it, but you kind of fucked it up. <laughs> no, um. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. So if you join the army, the army will pay for your school. That's one of the things that they kind of recruit people like myself into it, where you don't have to get a scholarship, 
You don't have to pay 50k in debt on a loan. Uh, all I had to do was just commit a drone strike and I uh, had my college paid for. Real simple. Uh, I do believe in protecting a country at a part-time level. That's why I joined the Army Reserve. My time is a little more valuable to me. <laughs> um, you guys think uh, Christians are a little too hard on women about wearing like mini skirts and uh, short dresses? Don't they see what Jesus wore on the cross when he died? <laughs> trying to trying to memorize the jokes here. Uh, I think Disney. Did you, did, first off, did you guys know that Disney made the Pearl Harbor movie back in like 2001 with Ben Affleck? You guys didn't know that. I think that Disney should remake that movie, but as like a musical with like The Rock and Ben Diesel or something. <laughs> Or do like a second version, uh, Pearl Harbor, Back to the Pacific, with <laughs> Jackie Chan and uh, Chris Tucker. I don't know. These are just ideas I'm floating out that I wrote down today. Riff a song. What? Riff a song. Riff a song. From the musical. Buddy, I'm white. I'm not black. I'm not a rapper. What can I say? The song's <laughs> falling. My ship is going down. What can I say? That's why the person that hears that is just going to fly straight into a boat. <laughs> well, I don't have the singing qualities of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have the family characteristics of Vin Diesel because we're family here. Or am I out of time, baby? Almost out of time. <laughs> uh, good thing Matthew Perry died. We'll never get Hot Top Time Machine 3. It's always a fun joke to tell people. <laughs> Uh, I'll end it here. Um, let's pull out a classic. Uh, having step parents can be hard. Um, you either want to fight them or fuck them. <laughs> They're either beating on your mom or fucking your dad, and you're just in the corner saying, When is it my turn? All right, that's all I got from the Army. <laughs> American hero, Chris Joyner, everybody. Give it up for him. All right, guys, it's a loud night. It's a crazy night. It's a wild night. But your next comic will be the only comic tonight that will be heard downstairs and commented on by the drunk white women. And then he'll go down there and talk shit about the loud guy who just interrupted their conversation for five minutes and attempt to weasel his way into their bedrooms. I've seen him do it multiple times. Everybody put your hands together for the lecherous Will Miner. Oh my god, I can't believe this loud guy just did come. Shut up, Jacob. Go back to Mexico, you illegal immigrant. Keep it going for Jacob, everybody. His shoes look like a case of PBR. Come on. He bought his two year old a gun. I love. Jacob actually did vote for Kamala, okay? He know it is, okay? I was talking to Jacob, and he was like, really, Will? She locks up drunk, she locks up black people and loves guns, yeah. They should go to school. Okay, thank you, Jacob. You saved that joke. That was horrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And keep it going for Chris, everybody. Come on. Richmond's Crimson Chin, everybody. He's a brave man. Thank you, Jacob. We really enjoyed that joke. Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. Come on up. The show's just getting started. Plenty of room for everybody. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Will. I am an Eagle Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. Anybody else? Hell yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> oh no, he's going to show me his dick. I know. I believe you. That's the sign. Ah! But no, I don't Oh man. I don't know if you know the Eagle Scouts. The few, the proud, the molested Eagle Scouts. Hey, she knows what's up. You're hip. Yep. <laughs> also, I don't know if you all are aware, to become an Eagle Scout, how do, how do you become an Eagle Scout? What do you have to do? You have to do Eagle Project. You're goddamn right you have to do one. You, you have to one. perform. You certainly do, Miss Huff. Huh, you've been paying attention. But back to what the elder Cuban gentleman was saying. You are correct. You have to do an Eagle Scout project. You have to do a service for the community. I, as a young youth, sold fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I had an impact. People were talking about me. I made the news. They still gave it to me. It was pretty great. 
I know, those Eagle Scout masters, they were like, God, we can't molest this kid. His butt is too big. <laughs> They're like, how do we get around him? His ass is just too large. <laughs> I know, it really perplexed them. I was a 12-year-old with a big butt. Anybody else with a big butt? Anybody else got a big butt out there? Hell yeah, one brave person, one very sad clap. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh gosh, I've got to... Yes, we're doing this! Yes, let's all co-op this. Come on, ladies. Fine, she gave me this kind of look. Girl, I've got the hair for it. Come on, girls! Chris, we're gonna show you how to sing and dance. And a five, six, seven, eight. You know, speaking of which, I feel like musical theater is how we could solve a lot of problems. You know what I mean? I feel like musical theater is how we could all come together. For instance, the Middle East. I feel like the Israel Gaza thing could really be solved with a little bit of musical theater. You know what I mean? They just framed it as a musical. You know, they were just like, when you're a Jew, you're a Jew all the way from your first matzo ball to an IDF raid. When you're in Gaza, you're never ever safe. Hey, it's a horrible place. <laughs> so many people are dying. Okay, free Gaza. That's my whole thing. That's my whole shtick. I'm gonna die on that mound. I know, I can't believe she lost everybody. Can you believe she lost the election? Oh my goodness, and I know, she lost Jill Stein. Jill Stein lost the goddamn election. Also, I was proud to say, everybody, oh man, on my ballot, I saw there was a candidate voting, uh, running on a pose. So I did the thing and I, I, I put my name down. I'm pretty proud to say that I threw my hat in the ring. I hope you all voted for me for second chair of the second district of the third chair. <laughs> I did not win. If you did not tell, I did not win. I could have used your vote. Where were you all for me? November 9th. Where were you all? This is why Trump won. Because you didn't vote for me. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's all coming apart. It's all coming to pieces. I don't know. I think life is full of fun little coincidences. You know what I mean? I think life is full of fun little happenstances. You know, like the most hateful people in the world, they could be the most silliest things. Like I found out, this just really delighted me. I found out that the largest Christian media organization in the world is called Trans World Radio. <laughs> See, you understand why that's funny. That's amazing. Oh my God, can you believe that? Like, do you imagine those guys back in the 50s? They were just like, yes, we got this down. Trans World Radio. The meaning of trans will never change. When people think of Christian radio, they will think trans. <laughs> they probably thought they had that shit on lock. Yeah, not. Just like I don't. What else do we have to work on this evening? Oh boy, here comes Jacob. I think that means my time is just about up. I'm gonna go ahead and do my last bit. Oh man, it's about penises. Oh man, get ready everybody. It's about, oh, that got her excited. Hey, oh, come on. Man. Oh boy, oh my goodness. I was talking to a gal pal of mine the other day. I was talking to a gal pal and she was explaining to me, she was like, Will, I was hooking up with this guy and this guy had such a big penis. Will, this guy had such a big dick. I could not have sex with him. Will, this guy's dick was so big, I could not do it. And I was like, wow. That has never happened to me. Oh boy. I just, you know, I think the best reaction I've ever had when like I've ever disrobed in front of anybody is just like, you know, they look me up and down, they're like, nice, manageable. Okay, balls. All right, I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for putting on the bills. Get you the back up here. Give it for Will Minor, everybody. Still wearing his Halloween costume of Guy Fox mask that put on weight. <laughs> Thanks, Addison. I appreciate that. I said that's not going to work, so I'm glad you gave it to me. All right, your next comic. Coming to the stage, everybody. Finally, a little sense, a little sensibility, a little bit of the common perspective brought to the stage. Your next comic recently body swapped with a redneck piece of shit. But now she's a good lady once again. Put your hands together for Grace Moyer! Yeah, girl! It was crazy. I said a bunch of slurs. No, I didn't. That's a lie. Um, you said your word! <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> he tried to make me. I said no! Um, uh, give it up for Jacob. Yeah. Everybody give it up for Will. Don't walk away yet, Will. Uh, Jacob let me choose where I wanted to go on the list, and I chose to go after Will Minor so that um, when I was smoking weed outside, I could have an alarm clock. I heard his voice immediately. It's time to go up. 
Um, what else did Will say? Oh yeah, Will was talking about um, getting his Eagle Scout thing. And um, I just, I wanted to note that one time he told me part of getting his Eagle Scout was um, getting an Indian lore badge where he made up fake Native American stories. Yeah, you did tell me that. And I don't have a joke about it. I just wanted to make fun of you for it. There's no punchline. I just, that's embarrassing. Um, anyways. Uh, Google Maps is homophobic. Do you know about this? Do you know how to drive? No. Okay, I, so, okay. Google Maps, they told me to keep straight past Hooters. And like, I was on the way to Joanne's Fabrics. You know, Michael's for lesbians. And like the Hooters, the Hooters was not even at an intersection. But they told me multiple times. I was like, why did they mention this? You know, how many gay bitches had to stop at Hooters on the way to Joanne's Fabrics before that became an official part of the directions? It's also like, you want me to keep straight past Hooters? I couldn't even keep straight past season three of Glee. She gets it. Yeah. Uh, any, any gay out there? Mm. I, I love going to home sweet home. I guess I'll pivot to all my jokes that aren't about being gay. That's a joke because, you know, a lot of my jokes are about being gay. Um, you know, I'm gay by choice though. Like, like when a Republican says sexuality is a choice, so you know that they're bi and choosing straight. It's like I still have straight thoughts, I just don't act on them. That's a sin. That's fucking gross. Some people say men are dogs, but for me, men are more like cats. Cause like, I'm allergic to cats. You know. Sometimes I see one and I'm like, oh, that's cute. I wish I could touch it, but I know if I do, I'm gonna start crying. Sabet, so don't have a side conversation with the one audience member. What the fuck? I was like, I need one person to listen to me. God damn. Um, you know, I'm, I'm bi, I'm a unicorn, but not like, not because I like have threesomes with ugly couples from Tinder. <laughs> but like I mean because like I'm bi and I live in Richmond, but I'm not Polly. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not like monogamous though. I'm just like a good old-fashioned slut. You know? Like I, I'm afraid of commitment. I have intimacy issues. It doesn't need to be a whole part of my identity. I don't need a term for it. Um, I just, I, I'll leave with this. Um, recently I was trying to make a gynecologist appointment and all of the options were virtual. What does that mean? Like, do I, do I just describe it to them? I'm like, no doctor, it doesn't burn. I said it's fire. I don't know, if that's not how it works, what am I expected to show whole on camera? But I'm paying them? Smells a little fishy. And that's my time. Thanks guys, let's get Jacob up here. Will Miner's trying to get a merit badge. He really wants me to say that was tells good jokes. <laughs> See, she said he, he lies about Indian stuff, so I, okay. All right. Uh, let's remember that Will is racist against the indigenous people and not me. Uh, and let's just move on from there. I just found out from Grace's set that I am also bi. 
I'm bi because I have straight thoughts and I don't act on them because I'm married. But boy, do I have straight thoughts. I have them a lot. And then my son's like, why are you pooping for so long? And I'm like, I'm having some real bi feelings right now. All right, let's move on, guys. Your next comic coming to the stage. Uh, <laughs> The next time I come to the stage is usually here. I usually put them on late in the show when there's nobody in the audience. And tonight I've decided to fix that. So everybody, put your hands together for Chuck Nephew! I appreciate being on early tonight. Now I ain't gotta tell my segregation joke no more. <sighs> I want to fuck a midget. Man, I know all the men here at least thought about fucking a midget at least one day before. You see all that ass that's gonna be dragging on the floor when they walk? Come on, man. I know I'm not the only guy. I'm not the only guy. Shout out to all my baptized people. Nobody? Damn, you baptized? Technically twice. Man, make some noise for me. Make some noise for the almost baptized lady. <laughs> I want to get baptized, but I'm afraid I might drown. <laughs> but then I thought about it. If I drown, would I still go to heaven? I don't know. Still working on it. Still working on it. Okay. Fellas, it's getting cold out here. Wintertime is approaching. Get you a big girl. Time to get a big girl now. I love big girls though, I love them. Cause I know it's hard for big girls to get kidnapped. <laughs> you say what? <laughs> Cause you, you the only audience in here. Like. Well you actually the only female in here. <laughs> As I know this now, so I'm ready to tell all these jokes to you now. Yeah, it's hard for big girls to get kidnapped, man. I'm just letting you know that. Now I can really tell a nigga, a nigga can't take my girl. I really mean that when I say it. <laughs> I love big girls though. My mama a big girl. I love big girls. Big girls got the best head. The best head. I'm telling you. Cause now, you know, their head sound like the washing machine. Yeah. I just come off the sound of the head, not the head, just the sound. <sighs> I love that head, man. I got some hair from a big girl one day. Front and the back of my pants was wet. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure this shit out, though. Because my pants was down to my ankles. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> to my calculations, that don't add up. I love them, though. I love them. Uh, what else can we talk about? Uh, anybody got white grandmas? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the white grandmas. Yeah. I wish I had a white grandma. Cause they bake you cookies and shit. Yo, don't bake you cookies. No, I'm not supposed to do that, Oh, shit. Yeah. They definitely do, believe me, I know. I told you I love big girls. But yeah, yeah, black grandmas, they don't bake you cookies though. They call you over just to cut their grass and shit. I'm like, grandma, I got my fresh shoes. I can't go cut no grass today. <laughs> she ain't trying to hear that shit though. Uh, what else I got? Let me see. Females getting out of hand these days. Yes, back to the ladies. <laughs> I had one female tell me, Chuck, my son need a father figure. I said, well, you need to figure out who the fuck his father is then. <laughs> Why the fuck you telling me? <laughs> like, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> uh, fellas, have you ever been so high you went over a girl house and forgot all about the pussy? <laughs> yeah, y'all smoking the right weed. Y'all just like me, okay. And I was so high one day, I went over to the girl house, ate all her kids' snacks. For real, man. I said, yeah, man, I'm tired. I'm going to get up out of here. Like, she texted me with question marks. I'm like, huh? What that mean? She said, aren't you forgetting something? I said, damn, I so am. 
I came back to her house, I said, baby, I forgot my lighter. Can I get my lighter, please? Okay, I'm ready to get up out of here. Uh, anybody got weak knees? You got weak knees? I got weak knees, too. You can tell a person got weak knees because they got to sit up twice. Oh, God damn. Woo. But yeah, I'm Chuck Nephew. You can catch me at the Funny Bone December 5th. I appreciate y'all. Chuck Nephew, everybody. Make sure you guys support him at the Funny Bone on December 5th. All right. We're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next comic is no longer allowed at the Funny Bone. It's not his fault. They hired a waitress named Ashley. That's his weakness. He's way into that. I actually, I wasn't going to do this tonight, but I do, I have to read my text from Pat Logan. Because the last one of these we did was the night of the election. And I'm going to read to you my text I got from Pat Logan, starting at 2.28 a.m. Bro. Bro. Now in all caps with an exclamation point. Bro! 15 minutes later, I'm not making this up. You up? Immediately followed by wrong number. Are you seeing this? To which I said, like, nah, I didn't see anything. Followed by 6.28 in the morning. Hey man, are you up? Can you give me a ride? Followed by 6.42. Nah, never mind. I got a ride. I was with you last night. Followed by 1 p.m. Dude, Trump! Eight flag emojis. I think. Nope, seven flag emojis. Uh, anyways, that's your next comic. I don't know what happened. I think he did a hookup with an Ashley of some letter. Maybe an Ashley M or an Ashley B. Uh, and now he's here. Everybody, the only comic who admits to voting for Donald Trump after Charlie Waring. It's my friend, Pat Logan. Bro! Bro! That is not how the text went. It was bro, bro. I want a fucking midget, dog. No, <laughs> and it was like, oh, Trump. I did see something happen crazy, though. Like, this is a tide changing because earlier somebody accused Jacob of voting for Kamala. He was like, no, no, no. Like, tide's changing, all right? If you voted for Kamala, turn this shit off, goddamn silver, and look. No, I'm just playing. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't touch your equipment like that. Trump God damn no it. more censorship, bro. I mean, how many abortions do you plan on getting, Sarah? I mean, God damn. <laughs> 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 Trump won no more censorship, bro. Sounds like Sarah's down there. Oh, uh, fuck. Um, let's see. Uh, my friend's a stay-at-home dad. I wish my dad stayed home. I wish my dad came home once. My friend told me I should get a Jacob's Ladder. You know what that is? Y'all know what a Jacob's Ladder is? All right. Um, I'm really into big girls. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I was calling that girl. You, you good. You good. You curvy. You curvy. What's your name, Kirby? She's not paying attention. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, shit. I'll walk to Jacob. Uh, bro! I'm practicing not using my notes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder. Y'all know what a Jacob's Ladder is? What is it? She's smiling. <laughs> She's like, a ladder at Jacob's house. Uh, 
Uh, my friend told me I should get a Jacob's Ladder, right? And if you don't know what a Jacob's Ladder is, it's multiple piercings down a man's penis. Yeah, I'm explaining it. It's uh, multiple piercings, it's like a ladder. And my friend's like, you should get one. I'm like, I'm, hell no, I'm not doing that. Women love that. You love that? I could get a Jacob's step stool. I just wanna yank the chain so it hurts you. Oh shit, you wanna yank the chain? So are you into like, uh, are you into like uh, hurting men? You like getting your ball stomped, dude? I don't know. You are? You're into it? What's the craziest thing you've ever done to a, a penis? Like, hurting it. Hurting it. Silver, cut this shit off, dude! What it? You really into it? You cut a penis off? Your boyfriends are yours. She's laughing. She's laughing. <laughs> No, I will admit, uh, as a straight white comedian, I am like a little paranoid about uh, being labeled homophobic. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm paranoid, be but it doesn't make sense. My best friend is gay. Even he thinks I'm homophobic. Are we best friends now? I mean, we could be. I'm about to fuck a trans girl, guys. Uh, <laughs> I am killing with this front table. You smoke too many cigarettes? I know that's fucked up. That's, that is fucked up nowadays because like, girls who smoke too many cigarettes got it bad these days. <laughs> like, <laughs> girls that like, almost look like a dude got it bad these days. You ever be on a dating app and you're like, ugh. Fuck. No, but I'm afraid of being labeled homophobic and uh. <laughs> But I don't get it. There's. Oh, uh, we can do it now. If you're a bear, the gays love you. What's that? You're a bear. I'm a, I'm a bear. You heard this, ladies love me. I said gays love you. Gays love me. Oh, fuck. God damn it. You're not fat enough. I'm not fat enough for who? For you? Saying, I'm afraid of being labeled homophobic, uh, but I have friends that are arachnophobic, right? I would never treat a gay person like a spider. I would never try to scare my mom with a fake gay person. You never trap a gay person What's that? So you never trap a gay person in her That's actually part of the, that's actually part of the joke. No, no, that's good. She's on it. You don't, yes, I would not kill a gay person I put a cup on top of them. You'll get rid of her? How are you gonna do that? Y'all are into some kinky shit over here. Uh, no, thank you for putting up with me. Uh, everybody's gonna look at you because we know all these assholes and um, please thank you. Uh, we're just having fun. Um, one more joke. Uh, I just got into, I'm trying to worry about my weight, Zuri. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I ate a keto cereal this morning. It was nasty. But it did, the name matched. It did taste like keys and toes. Uh, it was the keys part that I didn't like. Um, all right, guys, let's give it up for uh, the man who convinced me to actually vote for Trump, Jacob McFadden, everybody. Thank you. Just to be clear, I did not convince him anything. In order to keep my 5013C status, I had to be nonpartisan. Uh, everybody, I just want to make it sure it, it's on the record that we have to put Patrick up in order to keep our status as a fundraiser. Uh, he's a he's a good-ish kid. He's all right. Uh, all right, man, you and me. What happened? Come on, give me the after action. What happened? Oh, everything's good, man. Everything's good. Yes. All right, but what do you think you could have done different in the second half? <laughs> probably, probably ate some more of the tomato soup, right? I mean, the tomato soup, the tomato soup is banger. It's more alcohol. Yeah, more alcohol. All right, hey, let's all agree with him. More alcohol, everybody. Uh, anyways, uh, ladies, stay away from him. He has a violent, uh, sticky toxin that secretes from his horse. 
your next comment. If you thought Pat Logan was a delightful, enjoyable, woman-friendly performance, you're gonna love your next guy. Everybody put your hands together for the <laughs> for a guy who really digs into it. Richmond's Ari Shafir, it's James Copeland. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I know what you're all wondering. Do me and Jacob go to the same barber? The answer is yes. And the next answer is also yes. It is free. And the next answer is also yes. We do ask for the pedophile on parole look. There you go. By the way, Silver, uh, thanks for coming here after your asphalt crew shift. I no, I think this is good. This is new. I think I saw Timothy Chalamet wearing this. So. All right, uh, guys. Why is it that women say they're not wearing any panties? It's considered sexy. But when I say it, the Walmart clerk tells me I have to buy the pants I just tried on. All right. Also, another double standard. You, sir. Uh, you're my audience right now. That's a disadvantage of sitting right here. Every time you're gonna try to take a, sand take a bite of your sandwich, I'm gonna interrupt you, okay? What kind of sauce is that? Let's just talk about this. Tomatoes. That's a fucking third of a cut. That's not enough. They all have a word with the management. I, they respect me. They, they don't respect me. Um, guys, why is it that uh, when they're on women, they're called tits, but when they're on men, they're called bitch tits? <laughs> Doesn't that seem, it should be like the opposite way, right? Shouldn't be, shouldn't be the other way around? Um, if you went back in time and molested yourself, is that just masturbation? Yo, Patrick, Patrick better get laid off this. i fucking serious. He, he's getting way more eyes on him than I am on me right now. This is... Um, guys, uh, I think I'm, I'm using uh, LinkedIn wrong. I, I got a message on there. It uh, said, hey, uh, would you be interested in this position we have an opening for? And I messaged back and I was like, hey girl. Yeah, I'll show you some positions if you show me that opening. So, so I'm banned from LinkedIn. Um, I'm back to Craigslist. And I keep slipping into the casual encounters there. It's hard to find a job. Um, guys, I have a friend that, uh, you guys know what incels are? Yeah, yeah. I have, I have a friend, he told me, he was like, I just learned what an incel was the other day. And to, to me, I was like, that's like the most annoying way of bragging about how much pussy you get. Just you've never heard of not getting laid. Doesn't even occur to you, you know? So you didn't know what Trump was? What? I didn't know what Trump was? You, so you, you, should, you were gone for the last like eight years. Uh, I wasn't talking about myself there. It, it helps if you listen to the setup. Uh, then, then you kind of get like it, it's kind of like jumping on a trampoline. And you, it's like you, you got to know. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making eye contact yeah, with me when I said it, so that's why I thought you got it. It's all good. It's all good. 
Um, do, you guys, do you guys remember that show, uh, 16 and Pregnant? Yeah, yeah, I, I actually uh, looked into that. Um, so that show was on 16 years ago, this year. And uh, now every one of those 16 and pregnant girls are grandmothers. I, I assume. Do, are you, you think I'm 16 years old? If I'm 16 years old and I look like this, I would kill myself. The, like, I, I think people that have progeria and are 16 years old look better than this. Yeah, 16 years ago, I was not a newborn baby. Oh, this is, Jen. This is now a debate. Can someone get this woman a mic? Okay. Uh, you guys, I was looking into you know the Me Too. Um, do you guys know uh, Camille Cosby is still with her man? Now that's fucking ride or die. I mean, my wife would leave me if I changed the fucking thermostat without her asking or without her noticing. You, you a big Camille Cosby fan? Uh, the only thing. All right, thanks guys, I'm James. This is my lovely assistant right here. Get up here, James Coppoland. All right, man. No, I had that, what's your name? But you can pick whatever name you want, no one knows for sure, we're not checking ideas. Colin is? Yeah, Colin is my Colin, I'm gonna ask you, do you want to review every comic after they come up? Actually, I would love that. I would love it too. Kill Tony. Yeah, would you be willing to give? Yeah. I'm on board. Would you be willing to give you? All right, so yeah. let's let's start now. What did you think of James? What was? What do you think of James? I think James did great. James, let's fucking go, my guy. Let, yeah, everyone clap for James. Hey, if you are downstairs and you don't like Colin, fuck you. That's why he's a different name. Oh, hey, if you were downstairs and you don't like the five-seven blonde girl in the black. Five-seven. I don't know. Oh Stand up. God, I don't know. So tall now. Oh, hey, five-four. I don't know. What the hell? Well, you sitting down. All right. Hey, if you don't like Colin or whatever her name is, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right. Colin, are you ready? Your next comic is another beer. I really. Oh my god, so, you better be good. I like building people up. Building people up is cool, right? Oh, yeah. But it's way funnier to break them down. No, but I like building them up. I know, but you're not in the therapist's office. You're in no, a bar I'm in the middle of the night. I'm not in the therapist. I don't get paid That's right. That's right. So you're, and by the way, your next comic, this guy has a huge ego. He's yeah. very full of himself. Is this you? No, it's, it's, it's one of them. Your next comic. He thinks just because he's got a business with his name on it that he's some sort of king. Your next comic thinks that he controls who builds what in Virginia Beach or wherever he lives. Baby, you better be funny. Your next comic is like, I, she, I think she said the N-word. I'm not sure. Your next comic, your next comic thinks just because he drives a truck that that makes him a man with a big swinging hammer. We're about to find out, and Colin's watching, so I hope we're all ready. Put your hands together. All the way from the East Coast. <laughs> Addison Hall. Yeah! You watch it. You watch it. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Yeah. Name on my business, but I do technically own a business. Yeah. You guys want your bathroom fixed in the Hampton Roads area? Hit us up, dude. Riverside Remodel, dude. We do efficient jobs at efficient prices, dude. We're not gonna fuck you over like fucking West Shore. Fuck them, dude. You guys want to know some like inside construction knowledge? 
So West Shore will charge you $15,000 for a bathroom, and if they fuck up, we'll charge you eight grand to go in and fix it. That's really our job. That's half of what we do. It's going behind, the corporation's like, we got it, we know what we're doing. And then some guy doesn't know how to do drywall. Can you imagine you've been in construction for 10 years and you don't know how to go, Spah! that's it, that's all you gotta do. That's done, it's done. I made $500 doing that one morning, ma'am. Cause they didn't know how to do that. They didn't know you're supposed to attach a pearl bar to a stud. That's an instruction thing. You guys, the drywall's not strong. Don't trust drywall. Even if you put anchors in it, if you're 200 pounds and you pull on it to pull yourself up, you're probably gonna pull it out of the wall, all right? That's fucking efficient! Yeah, dude. It is wild doing construction because it is like seen as like a manly job. So anytime you're at anyone's house, they try to impress you. You know how many adult men I've had bring out their tools, like a toddler showing you their toys? Just being like, yeah, I got a ratchet drill. That's, that's, you know, this is an impact. You can use mine, it's fine. You know, it's good. It's really good. And how, my favorite part is when they brag about what they've done in their house. One guy was like, yeah, see this house? My dad built this entire house. And we had the floor open and my dad was crawling underneath, figuring out the framing, right? And the guy's like, yeah, my dad did all of this. He was a hard worker, man. He did it all. And my dad came out and went, I don't know who framed this shit, but they fucked it all up. And then this guy looked me dead in the eye and went, yeah, I don't know who framed this. <laughs> and that guy made me fib to my dad, dude. But that's what we do at Riverside Remodel. We'll fib to you. I'll, I'll look at my dad and go, that guy doesn't know anything about his house, dad. I don't know. Construction is really weird. Construction is really weird. It's really weird working in someone's home. Does anyone here have a job where you have to go into people's homes? No, just me? It's odd. It's so weird. Do you know how many housewives I see just popping pills, watching TV? It's a lot, dude. I saw a lady, she would like, I was 16, and she would just show up with white wine and I'd be fixing your deck, right? And I was a crazy person who was dropped out of school to support my family. So all I did was work construction, take my mom to the doctor, and deadlift. So I was just a crazy, socially awkward jack guy. And then just some drunk white lady in Virginia Beach would come out and go, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's how I lost my virginity, you guys. I lost it to a 45-year-old woman with stretch marks and gray pews. And now I need a bush or I don't, I'm not about it, you know what I mean? I can't anymore, man, I'm happily committed. And I'm fat now, all right? I don't lift anymore. Talk to him, he's jacked as hell. It's, it's odd when I don't notice your face with your biceps, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, damn, okay, yeah, good for you, dude. Do, do you do push-ups before going on stage so you can get the vein going? Because that's like wrestling tip. That's like wrestling stuff, dude. He wants to have a pump before he comes on stage, you know? I'm coming out jacked, ready to go, dude. And then he does like the most nice comedy. He's like, hey, you know the butt cheeks and the other butt cheek? I'm like, all right, I like this guy. Instead of this being some guy wearing flannel and being like, I'm sad, thanks for fucks. It's like, thanks, dude. I know, it's Tuesday and I'm drinking. Let's have fun. You know what I mean? Comics liked it. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I like construction. I've gotten to the point where I liked it. You know what I mean? It's fun having dudes who are just honest with you. All you guys have to deal with HR and shit like that. I have a guy who looked me in the face and went, I killed two people and then spent 30 years in prison. I'm like, great, but you gotta keep the cursing down, all right? <laughs> the homeowner's here. You gotta chill a little bit on the cussing, dude. This ain't the big house, all right? This is Mr. Smith's house and he likes no cursing, all right? You ever done that, ma'am? You ever looked a murderer in the face and went, hey? <laughs> hey, please stop with the cursing? Hey, uh... No. That's the answer is no. That is, I, I, I don't, I've never been confronted with a thing like that. I know, it's okay. I don't know. The weirdest thing I ever had working construction, it, which is, it's such an odd truth that I feel like no office worker can relate to, is I beat a guy up, fired him, and then the next week, my boss hired him back and I had to drive for two hours with him to a job site. <laughs> you guys ever beat someone up and then sit in the car and go, yeah, you wanna listen to classic rock? <laughs> like, this is not talk right now, dude. Uh, it was funny, I got you, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm sorry, Jacob. That dude, so that dude, I ran into him at a bar in Hampton. Back in the day, he used to be a pill head and that was a problem. Like I said, I was all jacked and I was fucking people up because I was, my dad's also a martial artist, so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed hurting people, it was fun because I'm a small person. 
But I ran into that guy at a bar and apparently pissed off his buddy. His buddy went over to get him. He was like, we're going to fuck this guy up. And he walked over and went, oh, hey, Addison. Immediately went from like, oh, like, oh shit, hey, Addison. Like, we got to go. The guy in the Spider-Man shirt's going to beat us up, dude. Anyways, shout out to this lady for not talking. My name's Addison Hall. You guys have a nice night. That's the first time I've been saying nothing, but I can't. Give it up for Addison Hall, everybody. Bring some real boo collar comedy. I'll come to you. Just I got to say his name first. All right. Addison Hall. Give it up for Addison Hall. Or don't. I don't give a fuck. All right. Colin, what did you think of Addison? I think we know where everyone is buried. Um, so can we all figure it out? Where were your uh, sites? Sites? Yeah, where were you doing your sites? Uh, there's more people Okay, so we have multiple sites. We have a serial killer on our hands. Let's fucking go. Edison Hall has murdered multiple people in a sequence. That piece of shit. Fuck you, Addison. Let's go. Fuck you, Addison. Yeah. All right. I, uh, I just want to say, Addison did ask if anyone here has worked with their hands or gone into other people's homes and no one applauded for them. Years ago, when I was 16, I got out of high school at 15, totally normal. Uh, me and my buddy Alex started a pool cleaning company when we were 16. And we, yeah, we double teamed a 58-year-old 50 woman together at her home. And uh, she, was a, she was afraid her fat, wrinkly stomach would show. She just wanted to wear a shirt during it. And all I can remember is her brooch. She wore a brooch on her breast the entire time we double teamed her. And now every time I see a brooch, I'm like, oh no, I'm 16. Fucking 42 years above my weight right now. Ah! Anyways, blue collar work. It's a great thing. Your next comic. Do you, you like murderers. We just learned that. I love a murderer. Your next comic, his father, has murdered. And this is confirmed. Yes, it is. Okay, Bertha, do you look like Your next Bertha? comic, no, not the black guy. Don't be racist. I'm not Your right next comic. That white guy over there next. <laughs> yeah, in the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. Oh no, I was doing lonely next to the staircase. Oh no, 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 no. Your next comic coming to the stage. His father, confirmed by the United States government, has murdered at least 50 plus people. That's right. Your next comic knows the smell of blood. It's the smell of his nursery. Everybody, put your hands together for the violent, the psychotic, the uncontrollable Nate Izquierdo. Everyone shut up. She said she won't be mean to me. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey guys, how are we doing? Wow, all right, no one, yeah, all right. All right there. Thank you. Thank you, audience members. Comments, pay attention. Be polite, my God. You know what? Let's get into it. I don't have a lot of time. I I better be fucking funny. I better be. Could you Im could you imagine? Like a thought like a thought experiment. Could you imagine if I was not funny? How embarrassing. That would be. Who's been the worst comic so far? I don't know. Describe them in any way possible. Get started. We're gonna get started. Folks, where's my parade? Me. There we go. All right. I guess that's the end of the joke. I wanted to my parade. Where's the parade? Where? That's all I need. I want to know this. All right. So I grew up not to brag. In the early 2000s, I know I look older, but I'm only 34. I grew up in a very specific time. 
when you did not want to be, I'm just, you're the only, I'm gonna do it to you guys. Where you did not want to be, no, 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 you're the only audience, everyone else. I'm also your age, too. Oh, hell yeah, dude, 34. No, I'm not, I'm 30, but go ahead. Uh, 34. You wish you were 34. No, I don't. All right, what did I say? Let's get into it. Fox Rocks Fox Parade. I want to know, so in the early 2000s, you weren't allowed to be gay. Not homosexual. You weren't allowed to be gay. You couldn't wear a fanny pack, because gay. Uh-uh, it just wasn't fun to be gay. It wasn't fun to be gay. Notes, it wasn't fun to be gay. But I want to know, so I grew up neuro, I didn't grow up, I am neurodivergent. Yeah, I grew up neurodivergent back in my day. So I grew up neurodivergent. So when I had a bunch of social cues, are you giving me the time? Oh my god, I thought you were lighting me. Jeez, the witch. <laughs> yeah, I should wrap it up. They really have your voice. So anyway, yeah, I grew up in the early 2000s being told social cues that you shouldn't do a certain list of things in order to not be gay. I have not went woo at a concert my entire life. I've never thrown up my hands at a roller coaster. I've never heard myself scream because I'm afraid that the little middle schoolers who live inside my head, if I scream incorrectly, they're like, gay. To this day, to this day, I do not make noise when I have sex with my wife. Not just my wife, in case I have sex with anyone tonight. I don't want to be like, hey, you said you only do this with your wife. I don't have, yes, the wedding ring means I have a wife. Oh, you thought I was gay. Uh, understandable, totally understandable. Not wrong. To this day, I don't make any noise when I have sex because a part of me is afraid that if I'm like, ugh, the middle schoolers will jump out of the closet and they'll go, gay, this guy looks fucking his wife! Gay! Jacob knows. Let them take notes. So we recently, my wife and I, we recently had our second year anniversary. I don't know if you guys, thank you. I don't know if you guys, well, we've been together for eight, but we've been married for two. It's, okay, that's cute, that's cute. That's cute. So I knew my wife was gonna be like, hey, uh, she likes talking during sex. I'm not a fan. I knew she was gonna be like, hey, come on, like, let's do something. So I was staring in the mirror, and I said, hey, when your wife talks to you, you, spurt, you speak with perfect diction. You speak with confidence. And my wife says to me, she says, where do you want me? And I said, uh, vaginally, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Thank you folks so much. Two hours and 40 minutes through traffic to do that for you guys. Oh, god damn it. Colin, what do you think? Um, I think he did uh, pretty good. I love the sex jokes, and he loved his wife, and that's the cutest thing. <laughs> it is so cute that he loves his wife. Does it change anything for you to know that he is 34 and his wife is 57? Wait, what? Honestly, let's fucking go, my guy. Let's. Go. They can't just fucking go. She needs I lubrication. Uh, anyways, oh, by the way, just we're, we are family friends. Hillary, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be funny. Um, yeah, yeah. She says pick up some diapers on the way. Yeah, okay. And uh, just to get a different perspective, my man, how do you feel? That was good. I enjoyed it. No, no. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to rate Colin. Oh, Colin was his last act? Oh, this Colin. Colin is a trip. She is full of personality. Just oh, spills her truth no matter what. Full of, full of personality. Is, full of personality is the best description I've ever heard. All right, guys. We all know me. If we're not going to have an audience, we're going to have a show. So, we're going to keep this thing moving. Colin, are you ready for your next piece of meat for the grinder? All right, let me see what they look like. Oh, well, you'll see. They walk up here, so you'll see. No matter what. <laughs> let me see it. All right. Have you ever been asked for change on the corner? Absolutely. Well, then you'll recognize your next yes. performer. Is it 
everybody put your hands together for the one and only Patrick Grady. I also take PayPal and uh, Cash App now. You look great. You look so good. Thank you. You know, this reminds me about why I hate my teenage daughter. When I was getting ready to leave tonight, she looked at me and she goes, Dad, why don't you groom your beard? And I said, the only reason I have this is because your mom said she wanted to see less of my face around the house. And I don't like going out. So this is compromise. And she was like, don't make me mute you, chat. And I was like, don't make me demonetize your channel. Son of a bitch, get out of here. I don't even know what that shit means, but it sounds powerful. You know, I love my wife. I have a trophy wife. She's awesome. Participation trophy wife. Because she reminds me that my effort is what matters. At the end of every session in the bedroom, she's like, hey, you tried. And I'm like, thank you. Fuck. I'm gonna kill myself now. I don't get mad at my wife for spending money. Although she did order a package a couple weeks ago and I got kind of upset about it. Because she wasn't home when it got delivered. I didn't know you could get 50 baby chickens in the mail. I just walked outside and there's 50 baby chickens in a box. I thought my DoorDash order came undercooked. I was trying to throw them in the air fryer. They kept jumping out. I was like, what the hell do I do with these? I called her. She was like, just put them in the pen. I was like, I don't know what you're saying right now. My wife's a farmer. I'm uh, not built like that. I'm built like this. So I have a fake email job where I sit inside in the air conditioning all day with my soft hands. And I can hear her working out the window. The other day she's driving pickets to put up a fence. Do you know what it's like to try and work? Your fake email job when your wife's out there driving pickets into the ground. All I hear is bing, bing, bing. I'm like, shut up. Make me some food when you're done with that. Anyway, working on changing that joke up. It's a little different. Um, Christmas is coming up. You know what saying I really hate? I hate the saying, it's the thought that counts when it comes to giving gifts. People will be like, oh, it's just the thought that counts. Try and go to your wife and be like, honey, I didn't get anything, but I thought about you. She's going to be like, well, I thought about you too, sleeping on the couch. You're going to be like, fuck. <laughs> You know the guy who came up with that saying was friends with Helen Keller? It explains a lot. He just said it because he's like, she can't hear me and can't see the fucking gift anyway. So it's the thought that counts. It's a true story. Man, I hate people who show off. I hate when my family shows off. I was at a barbecue and my brother's like, hey, check it out. I can go up steps now. I was like, wow, you can go up steps. He's like, yeah. Any steps six inches or shorter, I can go up now. I was like, bitch, look at this. I, that's like that's like eight inches. I can go up bigger steps than you, and I don't even need a wheelchair. Right? All right. Being petty is probably why I was really bad at customer service. People would come up to me, they'd be like, sir, can you help me? I'd be like, no. What could you possibly want right now? And that's why I got so many complaints as a paramedic. One thing I learned about being a paramedic, and this is a true story, the more degenerative behavior, the less likely it is to stop for a medical emergency. If you go to a baseball game, a kid's baseball game, and there's a heart attack, everybody will be stopped and gathered around and waiting for you. And it'll be calm and peaceful. If you get called to an adult bookstore because there was a heart attack in the back room, they won't even have their pants on yet. And you'll be there trying to do CPR on the ground. And it'll be like, and you're like, dude, what the fuck? And he's like, I just thought I could get next. And you're like, God damn it. This is true. These are true stories. I, uh, I was in the military for 15 years. And it was a shame when I first wanted to join the military, I went to the Navy recruiter. And he was like, son, you can't make in the Navy. And I was like, why not? And he's like, well, you don't have an ass. So that's gonna count against you in the service. So I went and joined the Army. And one thing I learned after 15 years in the Army is that we should really not support people's bad decisions. When somebody's about to make a bad decision, we should stop them. And that's why I say do not support the troops. They're all people who've just made bad decisions, trust me. Okay, there's no good decisions, 
me made by the troops, okay? I once got a hand job by a chick with no fingers in a bathroom of a bar. My buddy once had sex with a woman in her colostomy hole. What? All right? Have you ever caught syphilis from a colostomy hole? You ever tried? Don't support the troops. They make bad decisions. That's my time. Bringing back your host, Jacob McFadden, who caught syphilis the good old-fashioned way in his mouth. Thank you very much. Colostomy bag. Show everyone what it is. Hand over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a colostomy hole. The colostomy hole. Did we ever hear a wife's oh, name no. also, by the way? Oh, no. I think it's a microphone. No. Did I help? What was your wife's name? Because we never heard it. I need the mic to say it. Uh, uh, but His wife's name it? is colostomy. Colostomy. All right, that's, that's college talk. I think what we've all learned is that Patrick Brady's lying. He's a gay guy who's not married to a woman. Her name is Mitchell. Hey, Mitchell's a fine name for a woman. All right. Guys, this is going great. Uh, Can you believe this guy accused me of having syphilis? Oh my god, no. I've only had you gonorrhea twice. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Both times I got the long needle in my dick and I found out like five years ago they don't do that anymore, it's just a pill. So I had a Puritan doctor who fucked me over. Anyways, we're gonna keep moving on. Your next comic has had syphilis three times. Yeah. Oh, thank god, I, I forgot who was next. Your next comic, is the king of syphilis. They call him the simple king. Everybody, put your hands together. I'm gonna go get you a towel, so you just, you be comfortable. Your next... Uh, I'm married. Uh, well, now I feel bad, like I rejected her for no reason. Uh, all right, well, since we have a minute. She said that people downstairs don't like her. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> they did say it was your first night in Richmond, so you're covered. Okay. Your next comic has never had syphilis, but he's willing to try. Everybody put your hands together for Aunt Perez. Who, me? Yeah, really I like, I like that tingling oh! sensation. What are you recording, the downstairs noise? Are you gonna put it over my face? What are you pointing at? You don't have to be discreet, you're wearing an orange jacket. <laughs> oh man, I got up this morning, I was getting ready for work, I went to go get in the shower, and uh, the fucking hot water wasn't working. And like, this happens maybe like once or twice a week, but today in particular, I really like, you know, I really realize I'm poor. It's not good. Like I'm at the point where it's like, fuck, I'll go to work sick. I need to get these other people sick so I can pick up their shifts. That's, that's what I do. I, I take tabs on who's got health insurance and I, I sneeze on them. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going for. I, uh, I, I wish these people would stay where they're at. Uh, I picked up a gig recently, trying to get some extra cash delivering pizzas. And I, uh, <laughs> oh my kid, none of those people have health insurance. Uh, but anyway, 
I uh, I thought about it. I was like, you know, what am I? What's my family gonna think? I was stepping on it. Am my family gonna think I'm fucking up? Are my are my kids gonna think I'm a loser? You know, it turns out to my kids, there's not much cooler than a guy that takes people their pizzas. Like they're, I used to work in a phone store. My kids, they don't care about iPads. Like they have one of those. They need a new pizza every Friday. Like my kids don't think I'm a fucking nerd anymore. It's cool. I uh, I recently got my oil changed on my car. And uh, I was walking outside, I went to go get in my car, and I saw my neighbor across the street. He's always working on his car. And I was like, maybe I should just ask him to help me change my oil. And then I thought about it. He's always working on his car. Maybe he's not that good at working on his car. How is your shit always broke? People that work on cars are the only people that get... You see a dude working on his fucking Volkswagen Jetta every day, and you're like, that guy knows cars. But maybe he doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, if you know a guy that puts a roof on a house, and five days out of the next week, he's up there tinkering with shingles, he fucked up. That house leaks. Like, they're... Yeah, you know? I don't do anything to my car. That's that's what I'm saying. I drove up here with Addison. My car didn't have any problems. I got 197,000 miles on my spark plugs. That's a lot. <laughs> you guys aren't car people. That's it's fine. That's that's a lot. You're supposed to change them at. When are you supposed to change them, Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't change my transmission fluid till it started slipping. Uh, <laughs> Oh uh, man, the other day my car, the other day my car started shaking and the check engine light came on and I just turned it off and turned it back on again. <laughs> it's been working fine. I probably got like a burn in my air filter or something. Who fucking knows with that car? Um, I used to watch that show uh, Biggest Loser. That was like one of my favorites, Biggest Loser. You guys remember that? You watch that? They get these three, four hundred pound people on there trying to make their life better. They just videotape them working out, exercising for like six to eight hours a day. They had them all in this big ass mansion. They called it the ranch because these people were as big as fucking livestock. And uh, <laughs> I thought it was crazy because they would hide traps in the house. If you go back and watch, they were, there were traps in the house because they had all these things to make like a smoothie and then the person would be like, oh, where's the cups? Open up the drawers, trying to find the cups. And in one of the drawers, would just be filled with candy bars. And then, you know, the, the, the person, Steve, whoever was trying to make his life better would start, you could see a relapse was imminent. He would start breathing out of his mouth and shit. And then the camera would cut, would cut to the way ends. Someone gets on there. They've lost like five pounds. The crowd's like, oh, that's great. The next person gets up, they lose like seven. They clap even more. Then Steve gets his fat ass up there and he's gained four pounds. They'd have that cute, attractive blonde woman who was only a host on that show. She was never, you know, that was her show. She would look these fat people in the eyes and be like, what happened? The guy's like, I don't know, I don't know. She's like, roll the tape. <laughs> It's him just housing king-size candy bars. Which is crazy they used to have that show. Fast forward to now, they don't even help them anymore. It's just my 600-pound life. They put a camera on their face and like, watch them live. They just, they don't even put them on a treadmill. They just put them in a wicker furniture and play suspenseful music. <laughs> I saw one guy out there. <laughs> Uh, for real, if you listen quietly, you can hear the chair. It goes, ah! <laughs> That's that patio furniture. Uh, but anyways, what was I getting ready to say with that? Oh, yeah, the best episode I saw, there was one guy. Before he was a 600-pound whatever, he was a 300-pound drug addict. And, you know, that's just funny. I didn't know they made junkies in a 3X. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. Perez, everybody. Aunt Perez. I'm going to go to Colin just because it's our tradition. Everyone knows. Colin. Now, I'm going to tell everyone. Colin did lead me downstairs. I knew. I knew. By the hand. Sort of overhanded like I was a new bride. And it was romantic. I'm going to be honest. It was wonderful. I was in a state of bliss. But 
nothing happened. Nothing happened. Uh, we went down to the bar. I said, I'm going to go up in the back and get a towel. And she said, I'm going to go in the back. And I said, I don't think you should. And she said, I know Bridget. And Bridget just got accepted to the fire academy. So I said, let's find out. Um, I got the towel. I don't know what happened to Colin, but she's back now. Colin, how do you think that Aunt Perez did? Um, I don't think. Hold your mouth. Okay. I know how to hold a mic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't think. <laughs> so far. Okay, ready? I think he should not talk about me being overweight because uh, you. Team, but I do know. There's nothing wrong with a cute little overweight. We love. I agree. I agree with Colin. Aunt Perez has a little gummy buddy, and that's how we're all gonna remember him. I remember that, and I want everyone to go back to Portsmouth or whatever ghetto he's from, and tell everyone that he has a little gummy buddy. And that's from the capital. We all think the gummy bunny is cute, so don't do it. An adorable don't gummy don't bunny. Shit. Just don't talk shit about it. Thank you. I can't believe my wife doesn't like that I do this. Okay, your next comment coming to the stage. Your next comment, I'm going to tell you, Colin, I have certified 100% gummy okay. bunny free. Are you No ready gummy for bunnies. Me? Are you ready for me? Uh, I'm not, but your next comment is also not. Uh, Honestly, no, I'm gonna do the best things about you, like in the most beautiful. You're beautiful. You're good, I'll do it, but if I only realized like last week I should do more office takes no, to the camera. No, it's the no, they're very when the audience is yelling at comics, I should let the camera go. Let's go. Then yes, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Alright everybody, here we go. Your next comment coming to stage with the official Colin seal of approval. It is Flo! Hi, thank you. We've established that. Um, you want, sometimes uh, when I'm overstimulated, I hold something cold. So do you want to hold on to this cup right now? Okay, great. Maybe I'll get through the set. Um, You know what? I want to shuffle these, actually. Um, while it, no, I do not. No, I do not. No, you're good where you are. You take up your own space and not mine, please. Thank you. I, I think so, too. Hey, here's my impression of somebody being surprised to hear that Sean Combs has urinated. P. Diddy, P. Diddy. You told me to only say the good ones. Uh, listen, y'all. I got a problem. They say you're not supposed to shake babies. They say never shake a baby under any circumstances. But I have a problem. My baby is stuck in a Yoo-Hoo. I don't know how to get him out. You gotta... It says shake before you open. I'm not thinking yet. I'm the baby. Shh. 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 I've got a God complex. This is for you, YouTube. Is this YouTube? This is YouTube? You named your camera YouTube. That's so sweet. I've got a God complex, and Thor never pays his rent. I, 
I'm an avid stoner. Anyone else in here avid stoner? Me. Yeah. Yeah. I also believe it's the best form of capital punishment. I changed all my passwords to September 11th. And I But I... Somebody over here loves terrorist attacks. Uh, I'm not gonna say who, but somebody really likes terrorism and honestly, not surprised. Um, I masturbate religiously. I don't wanna do it, but my parents make me. You would be the worst ad-lib guy. Uh, <laughs> this one just says, eggs, milk, bread. I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's not a joke. That's my suicide note. <laughs> oh, you don't think suicide's funny? <laughs> In Trump's America, suicide's funny? <laughs> I just got here in my jerk-off powered time machine. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Oh, one, one side of this literally is just scribbled through nonsense. I don't know. Oh, I don't want to tell that one. Uh, my dog keeps trying to gaslight me. He keeps telling me I shot Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Am I John Wilkes Booth, motherfucker? Uh, do you all, you, you, you remember? Back in uh, the second Bush term, when somebody found Jesus in their toast, you remember that? Yes. And it sold on eBay, whatever. I swear, the same thing happened to me just the other day, but it was an image of the Prophet Muhammad. I don't, I don't have anything to compare it to, but. Just to be clear, if there's any jihadists in the crowd, um, my toast, my toaster, made the image of the Prophet Muhammad. I just witnessed it. I feel like that absolves me of all jihading related crimes. Uh, please welcome your host, the most avid jihadist, Jacob McFadden. <laughs> Give it a flow, everybody. Give it a flow. All right, Colin, this is what we do. Colin. Okay. Hey, I don't wanna I don't wanna tell everyone that the next drink has been spiked. But Colin's friend just told her the next girl is awesome, so shut the fuck up. So in case you think the numbers are artificially inflated, they are. But Colin, what do you think of flow? I think she sounds I've got to be honest, the last time I handed over the mic, she said, I know how to use a microphone, and this time she literally grabbed it and covered it, which is the opposite of knowing how to use one. But hey, Flo, the answer was you did so good, we are a fucking family. So, uh, Flo to you, I say whoop whoop. Uh, all right. Now, Colin, get ready. Uh, wait, I'm here. What is her name? That's Jessie, and she's a fucking bitch. Is that her government name? Uh, Jessica. Oh, Jessica's her government name. Okay, that's cool. She's respecting your code name, but you're just going to blast her government name everywhere. That's fine. Thank you. You know what? I went downstairs and gave Bridget the cloth back, and she said, you should hold on to it. I said, I won't need it. I should have held on to it. Uh, all right. It's just ice. You don't have to pay for ice. Okay, everybody. As Jesse, aka Jessica, has told Colin, everybody, put your hands together for a sister lover. This guy, we call him Big Chuck. Your 
you're sorry you love your sister? I'm so sorry that I love my sister. Why are you sorry? Is she like a she's rapist? A good, no, she's a good person. Oh, okay. Then why are you sorry? <laughs> I fell into the trap. I talked to her. Fuck. Ah, it's, no, no, no. What are you working with? What am I working with? Well, I'll tell you. We all know the saying, big feet, big cock. <laughs> we all know that saying. That's what I had heard anyways. Till one day, I got big enough, my feet were bigger than my dad's. I went out to him. I said, hey, you know what they say about big feet, don't you? And my dad said, yeah, I know what they say. Things don't grow well in the shade. So that's my dad telling me I have a tiny cock. Um, he's seen mine. That's unfair. I've, he's seen mine. I've never seen his. I have to try to tell him it's gotten bigger since I was a baby. But, uh, okay. Cocks. Let's move on. Uh, sometimes I wish that my dog could talk. Uh, I think a lot of people wish that. They wish their dog or their cat could talk. But you know, you know, that's a wish you might not want to come true, right? You think if your dog or your cat starts talking, things are going to be like a Disney Channel movie? But you could get like a genie and wish for your like dog to talk and you find out your dog's got some fucked up political opinions, right? You could wish for your dog to talk and find out he's like a men's rights activist. Like I took my dog's balls. He probably doesn't have a healthy view on women. That's... If my dog could talk, he's just going to be like, I think the government should provide all men with a girlfriend. He said, oh, you're a white man. To my dog? My dog's black. That's racist. Uh, my dog doesn't know it. My dog doesn't know he's black? He, he knows. Does not know. Okay, thank you. In America, he knows. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, thank you, Colm. Uh, anyways. Uh, you're beautiful. You're very handsome. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, well, I'll do it for you. okay. I also I shit my pants all the time. Uh, <laughs> I have poopy pants right now. Uh, you guys, uh, I I hope that uh, we're not living in like a computer simulation. That's what I hope. Cause I, I I'm worried that if we're living in a computer situation sim sim simulation a situation. I live, <laughs> Right, but you can make things worse, and you are, so thank you. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm hoping I'm living in a computer simulation. I'm worried that like, we're in a computer simulation, and that whoever made me, they use the name Charlie, because in the future, like, that's a slang term for cum, right? That's what I'm worried about. I don't think that's right. You don't think that's right? I don't think that's right. You don't think it's right? Thank you. Uh, I don't know, because you ever play Oregon Trail as a kid and you rename all the characters like uh, Penis and Boob, right? That's what I'm worried about. Did you love it in the Oregon Trail? Now you're paranoid. Now I'm paranoid. <laughs> oh, no! I know, I'm paranoid someone's going to interrupt my set with something really unfunny. Um, <laughs> See? Yes, you got me. That's true. That laugh was for you. Uh, it's... <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought it was. Oh my god. Uh, someone's a ventriloquist. Okay. Um, yeah, anyways, I don't know. <laughs> I lost my place. That's fine. Um, go for it. Thank you. That's, I'll just go for it. Oh, yes. Well, I already did that part, but... Uh, Oh wait, no, I did it. Oh yeah, no. Because what if you name? You ever have you name a character poop on the Oregon Trail and they die of dysentery? That's pretty funny. It would be if uh, the timing was right. Sam likes it. Uh, thank you, Jacob. I'll end it. I'll, I'll just do this. Uh, the, the news is crazy right now. I keep watching the news. It's all uh, fitting all this, fitting all that. Oh, my cousin died of a fentanyl overdose. It's like, oh, damn, you ever think of fitting all this cock in your mouth? <laughs> that's what I say to someone whose relative died of an overdose. Um, no, you just had a good, funny bit at the end. Thank you, yes. To summarize my set, I had one funny bit at the end. All right, my name's Charlie. Let's get Jacob back up here. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm an asshole. Oh, no, Polly. 
don't give it away for free. You gotta say it into the microphone. What do you think of Big Chuck? Don't give it up for free. Just like, just give it up when you are happy. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what that means, but let's fucking go, Chuck. I don't know what I mean, to be honest. I, uh, how do you know what that means? Oh my god, I watch people do this all the time, and I'm like, how can they not figure this out? Now I'm like, this is a trap. You have this great fucking story, but not feel bad. Don't feel bad. You have to remember, everyone who comes up here and talks on this microphone is subhuman. So do not feel bad. They are all garbage, and they deserve to be treated as such. Okay. That is Would you do me a favor then? Would you come up here and say your next comic is a paragon of humanity? Zach Carpenter. Say your next comic is a paragon. Zach Carpenter. Can we come up here and be the sweetest thing in the entire world? Zach Carpenter! The sweetest thing. That's my set, everyone. Thank you. All right. Give it up. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I actually um, was recently released from a rehab facility for the second time in six months. I'm a frequent flyer. I. Uh, trying to break the record. Uh, it's because I love crack. Um, and that was supposed to be funny. But it is true. I have an issue. I, uh, I have such an issue that, um, you know, I was like, you know, they're like, I'm living in a place and they're like, you can't live here anymore. And then I was living in another place and they're like, you can't live here anymore either. And then I was living somewhere else, and they're like, sir, you can't live in your car here, actually. Um, so that's, I had to go to rehab uh, for track. Um, I actually, um, what else was I gonna do? Oh, yes, I was actually, was welcome home. I was at a party, they had a really good meal spread, right? My cousin, he was like, hey, are you doing all right? I know you had, you came back home, you know, we you were in the hospital and everything. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing okay. As long as there's no crack cocaine at this party, I think I'll be fine. But these meatballs, but these meatballs are close. And uh, that was my bit for the night at the uh, thing. That was, of course, a lie. Nothing comes close to the sweet taste of crack. Uh, this guy I met in rehab said that he was cooking a special kind of crack. He would put purple food coloring in it. And he would name it Grimace. And I was like, give me some of that, brother. I want to turn into a menace. That was a McDonald's crack joke. Um, all of these jokes are mostly about crack. Um, uh, someone asked me one time, why do you like cocaine so much? And I said, how much time you got, buddy? <laughs> no, um, what I actually said was, have you ever gotten a blowjob before? And then I said, well, imagine getting a blowjob up your nose every 15 minutes. And that's what it feels like to do blow. Um, I wrote this joke while I was in rehab, and let me know if it's funny. Uh, I like... I like my neighbors like I like my cigars. Black and mild. As opposed to black and wild because I don't like their music very much. I actually asked a black guy if that was funny and, he, and I said, I actually asked him if that was racist and he said yes. But it was funny 
And then he called me Whitey, and then he dapped me up, and I missed. Uh, so <laughs> that was how that went. Uh, Hey, speaking of cigar smokers, you ever notice how like old head cigar smokers, they like make fun of the new age for vaping, right? They're always like, geez, what is that wonderful smell? I wish someone was smoking dirt and leaves and tar instead of this wonderful smell of berries and cheesecake or whatever. That was bad. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm just, you know, since I'm, uh, you know, trying to be reformed or whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end on this one because I don't have much else. Uh, I'm trying to be a reformed guy, you know, and I was like, I need responsibilities. You know, I was telling my therapist, you know, I need responsibilities or something, you know, maybe I should be a father or something like that. And she was like, you've literally been telling me how much you want to smoke crack all session. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, so thanks, I've been Zach Carpenter. Woo! Yeah, yeah, Zach Carpenter, everybody! Not Zach not Carpenter! Not I gotta be honest! Baby, I found out I'm actually gonna be a mother. <laughs> She's pregnant in a lesbian way, I guess. <laughs> Hey, I just want to be clear in case it was caught on camera. I did hold Colin's hand the entire time during that yes, set. Yes, but I did not use my thumb to rub her fingers in a reassuring way so it's not cheating. That's how that works. I was basically in a prisoner situation. Woo, I'm sweating. And I love my wife. Your next comic. Your next comic coming to stage, you better watch out. Your next comic coming to stage is known as the vagabond original comedy. The, I'm out of this intro already. Your next comic is literally me being tossed at the grinder. Everybody here to try and sink Colin's thirst. It is. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to ask for a raise next month. Can I get Colin to come with me? You're next. I'll, I'll be here. I'll be here. Yeah. I, I, I just want her to go outside. Don't make no. her make Every time Elaine is in the room, I chip a tooth. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for a... <laughs> Get a cigarette. It'll be a good cigarette. My set's okay, so you won't be missing much. Um, so we're we're there. We're there. It's okay. You can catch me in two weeks. It'll be fine. I'll still, I will be here. Um, so some of y'all uh, may have seen me before. Might be wondering uh, what's up with this Alarion business. Maybe you're thinking. Uh, maybe you're thinking like I too have seasonal depression, but I don't give myself a new name just because I didn't shower or shave. And uh, first of all, you could, like you know, if you're thinking. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I be heard? I'm gonna eat the. I'm gonna eat the mic now. Um, uh, no. So, uh, yeah, if you're having a bad time and your shit's not together, you can just tell your friends, like, I'm Josh this week. That's fine. You can do that. Uh, also, it's not seasonal depression. It's just regular depression. I feel this way all the time, even when the weather's nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing the mask alter ego right now because it doesn't feel right for this to be Persephone. 
Persephone is kind of an aesthetic that I have cultivated over six to eight months, and this just isn't it. So, being non-binary, gender fluid, representing. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I got a new therapist recently, and I don't know how y'all do therapy, but I don't uh, tell everything all at the beginning, right? I kind of save a little bit, because I need to know if we fit. But that's kind of caused a bit of a problem because now she's like trying to help me with things when she doesn't actually know what's going on. So she's like trying to get me like goal oriented and getting to do things that I've been putting off. And that's dangerous for me because um, like procrastination has saved my life. Because the shit I'm putting off is the stuff I need to do before I kill myself. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, do y'all remember the uh, Southwest Airlines ad campaign from like 10 or 15 years ago, like, want to get away? And uh, it'd be this thing where like, somebody would do something embarrassing and then the voiceover would be like, want to get away? And they'd tell you about all the flights to places that you never wanted to go to, like, $40 to Topeka, like, Okay, touche, Southwest. The only reason I'd want to go to Topeka is if uh, I just sent a dick pic to my mom. That would make Topeka appealing. Uh, I think Boeing needs to pick that ad campaign back up. Like, want to get away? Maybe forever? Like, all right, Boeing, yes. <laughs> I'll take a window seat, thank you. Uh, I think somebody had mentioned, like, last thoughts before you die. Uh, Savannah, right? I think so. Uh, that's why I think falling out of an airplane, like a commercial flight, would be one of the best ways to die. Because you'd have like three minutes to figure out like what you want that last thought to be. Like not too long ago, I, had, uh, I hurt my leg during the day, and later that night I was cooking. I didn't realize I was standing weird, and I had my knees locked. So I like all of a sudden started to pass out for what was to me no fucking reason. And uh, my last thought, as like the darkness was closing in, was like, oh shit, I didn't finish cooking the hamburger. Like, the fuck is that? Is that how we're gonna end this shit? I hope not. Um, I feel like millennials are getting screwed over by the trope that uh, old people complain about how expensive shit is. Cause like, every time I start to wanna like be like, oh shit, things cost so much now, it's like in my brain, like, no, that's an old person thing. But like it used to be like somebody in their 60s or 70s would be remembering when they were nine. And like, all right, grandpa, it's been over half a century. There was a whole ass world war. We figured out maybe we should pay black people and women fair equal wages, kind of maybe we're still working on that. Uh, but yeah, shit's, shit's more expensive now. I'm like in my mid 30s, remembering my mid 20s being like, I used to be able to afford Taco Bell. What happened? <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. Uh, I'm Alarion today. Uh, yeah, Alarion, the mask alter ego. We're out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, sex work is work. Being a landlord isn't. Uh, fuck cops and free Palestine. Oh, wait. Is our host here? I'm sorry, man. I went short. I wasn't ready to tell more jokes. That's my bad. Larry on, everybody! I know everyone here might find this hard to believe, but I was dealing with some managerial stuff downstairs. All right. We are now down to our final five comics. Your next comic coming to the stage is a professional comedian. And by professional, I mean they do this in a very stiff way with no room for creativity and they just deliver it pro forma. Everybody, here on a T38 form, it's Sam Nelson. Hi everybody, I'm sad that the drunk lady left. I was excited, I was gonna find out uh, whether she liked Naruto or Sasuke better, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we all know she likes Tsunade, am I right? <laughs> I 
this is he's got knockers. Uh, what the fuck is going on with what's the deal with hate fucking? Am I right? Ah, I don't like you at all. Let's have sex. Grow up. Grow up. Uh, when are they going to invent love fucking? Am I right, folks? <laughs> That's just something that I've been thinking of. Uh, you want to do this next one? All right, I'll do it. Uh, what's the deal with monkeys? Oh, I'm not, that's probably weird to do. Sorry, I was going to point it there. It's, it's Joe. <laughs> uh, in South Carolina, 43 monkeys escaped from a research facility. 42 monker, monkers. What's <laughs> a monker? <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Um... 42 monkeys were recovered. Uh, for people who know how to say monkey, uh, you probably determined that it means that they only recovered one monkey. Uh, I think they got him because he went back to get his infinite typewriter uh, so he could finish the last few pages of Hamlet. Um, hey, yeah. Uh, I found out it's like a, like a brain facility that the monkeys escaped from. Like they do research for humans on like brain disorders, but they test it on monkeys, and it's kind of fucked up because like, like monkeys don't just come brain disordered, you know. So there's one guy who has to like wake up every day and go to his job as like the monkey brain damage technician. What do you even do there? Do you you just give him a bunch of galaxy gas and just turn on Instagram reels? You make them, <laughs> you make them play offensive line for a couple of seasons. You can tell that they're ready if you uh, put them next to a bow flex with their wife and kids, and something happens. Chris Benoit. Um, hey, you thank you. His family, yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, you guys hear that they're putting Joe Biden down? This is, I wasn't, look, it's, it's pretty sad, the whole thing. They're putting him down. Uh, they told him, they said, uh, Mr. Biden, you're going to be cremated. And he said, uh, cremated? I want chocolate. He likes ice cream. Um, <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> no, that was on me. I apologize. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay, uh, she give brain to my worm till I'm RFK, um, oh god, uh, <laughs> uh, Chuck was talking about, uh, guys with big feet having big penises, uh, that's, that's right folks, that's why I only fuck clowns, uh, yeah, this is, uh, here's a different situation for that, uh, I was imagining a man who goes and gets like uh, elective surgery to make his feet bigger uh, and they look all mangled and fucked up but they're way bigger and he walks around on a beach and he's like, you know what this means? Okay. Brandon, you sure you don't want to do one? You can, if you want to. You got, I have one about black Israelites. You want to do that one? Yeah! This is, here, can you say, uh, you, can you say, uh, do you know black Israelites? Can you say, you know black Israelites. You know black Israelites. Um, I really like black Israelites. This is... <laughs> they're not so big on me, but I, that's okay. Uh, I like black Israelites because they fight fire with fire, and I think that's inspiring. Because uh, uh, you'll see something terribly racist online. You'll see it on Twitter. You'll see it on Instagram or something. And you'll see a million comments that are like, like, we can't stand for this, this is terrible. Uh, and then you'll see a black Israelite comment and he'll be like, you ever notice how white people look like chimpanzees? <laughs> and I'm like, that's fucked up. Like, you shouldn't do that either. That's really... And then you see the side by side that they have. And it's a chimpanzee and it's like one of those old white guys that have like the bugged out PTSD eyes and they look like they lost their lips in the war. And I see that, I stare at those images for too long, I just... 
I don't know. Like, that's just bananas. <laughs> All right. That's it for me. Let's get our hose back up here. Sam Nelson, yeah. No, I get it. Sam Nelson's got to shake the hands of a black guy before he shakes the hands of the host. I get it. That's fine. That's true. It was weird. It was weird. Him and his Calvin Klein That's belt buckle country, turned all the way aside. I know it's my country now. Don't think I forgot. I remember. Hey. One of the good ones. <laughs> Delete that. But, but, but give Damien a copy so he can get into the club. No, Damien is, uh, he is legitimately one of the good ones. <laughs> it's when its when you add legitimately to the front, you're like, nah, it's not funny anymore. Now it's weird. <laughs> but Damien's not going to let go, but he's going to be like, I am legitimately one of the good ones. All right, we're going to keep moving this along. Uh, your next comic, your next comic is the guy who decides who's legitimately one of the good ones and who isn't. And he does that as a manager at Strangeways Brewing Company. The brewing company that decides who's a good one and who's not. Whoa. That's right, and he asked me to say that before he came up on stage. Just so we're clear. His company, Kindred Spirits Brewing Company, says that they decide who's a good one and who's not. And if you don't like that, you go right back to Arden Barrel Room and say, I don't think you guys should decide who's a good one and who's not. Now that I've made it crystal clear, whether or not Sapporo decides who's a good one and who's not, Danny McKay. Sapporo! Yeah, that's right, that's right. We at Hardywood decide who's good and who's not. And you don't like that, and you shouldn't, because that's not what we do. That is not what we do at Triple Crossing. No, hell no. Hell fucking no. You know, uh, Sam brought up, uh, you know, uh, old guys. I was thinking about old guys. I was thinking about our president, current president, Joe Biden. You know, I saw a clip uh, last week where... Um, he decided after a speech that he was going to wander off into the Amazon. I think that's a really good thing we need to do with presidents after they become president. Like, after they're done, great, we banish them to the Amazon. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Y'all get back to me about that. But uh, that's the thing is, you know, presidents make life tough and life is tough. Life is tough out there. But I think, you know, the, the problems that we have, they've been going on forever. I mean, I think about the first generation of us people who came together, you know, it's like, we're gonna be the generation that starts agriculture. And, you know, the older generation before it, it's like, this generation, they don't know how to hunt fucking mammoths. But you know what? You killed all the mammoths. So there you go. F fucking cavey boomers, am I right? Am I right? Ha! <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's crazy, because, uh, speaking of cavemen, I, uh, I suffer from this condition, uh, it's known as, uh, being visually Republican. It, uh, it affects, uh, one in every two of men of my caliber. You know, uh, it's especially hard when you're at work, because they always think you're on their side. You know? something's going to be going down and they're just going to give you this look. It's like, I know, I know. And it's like, I see you in a red hat. I'm like, I can't wear a red hat anymore, you know? Mine used to say Chili's on it, and now I can't even wear that. Thanks. Thanks, Obama, for not running again and letting Trump win. I think that's how that works. Don't correct me. Don't correct me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. But you know what I am mad about? Shit. I used to work in scientific research. Scientific research about, you know, the, uh, the, the climate change, right? Climate change is real. Climate change is real. It's getting out there. It's bad. You know, we actually used to compare these coastlines on these barrier islands that uh, I used to study with uh, how much recession they'd have with how much my hairline was receding as well. You want to know what we found, guys? You want to know what we found? We found that by 2030, 
The coastline's gonna go in about 200 yards. That's very rapid. And I'm gonna need one of those newsy caps for my fucking head. Terrible stuff, terrible stuff. But you know, the Republicans, they deny climate change. Me, I suffer from visually Republican. They don't want to hear this. They don't like this. They don't want no one bit. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit Lebanese there. You know, so, you know, they're looking for a name to call me. They want to call me a cracker. Don't call me a cracker. I'm a pita chip. Yeah. Still a cracker, but uh, good with hummus. You know, associated with hummus. Right. Something like that. Something like that. All right, well, I'll leave you all with one last one here. Well, that's yeah, something like that. Shit, you know, I've been thinking about dogs recently, you know. And then I think about movies, movies with dogs. There's a lot of movies with dogs out there. Uh, then I was thinking, like, hey, movies are all reboots now, right? Like, you know, are we going to remake some of these dog movies? Like Benji, all this shit. Then I thought about this one thing. You guys remember the show called Wishbone when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this dog that, that recreated stories. You know, I think we should reboot that. I really think we should. I think we should reboot this show about this dog reenacting stories, but do it with smutty versions of American classics. Yeah, make the dog sexy again. Again? I don't know, but we'll see. And the craziest thing is our first parody, I have it written out, I have it out. And it's all based on dogs too. It's called Where the Red Rocket Grows. Yeah, yeah, old yeller in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Dog Tremaine. Shit, I could go with these all night. Yeah, 20,000 beagles under the sea. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. You know what, fuck it, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep going. We don't see Jacob yet, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep sounding like we're in an auction. We're gonna be in an auction right now. No, we're not. No, we're not. Because that's the crazy thing about dogs is they got a lot of energy pent up. So do guys like me. So do guys like me. Guys like me, we get compared to be calling the golden retriever boyfriend. See, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I mean, there's such a broad spectrum of dogs out there. Why I gotta be the golden retriever, you know? Lots of different guys are different dogs. You know, you got your little like kick dogs that kind of shake a little bit. You know, they're always on edge. That's like dating an addict, right? Yeah, you know. You got a, uh, you got a, uh, you know the, you got drug dogs. Yeah, drug dogs. It's like dating a cop. But you see, that's the thing. I don't date cops, even if she was sexy. I don't care. Or if she was in that cop uniform at, you know, strip club, who cares? I don't know. But I'm not even a dog, and that's why I can't do it. You know why? Because I'm a copybara, you know? Friends with everyone like that. Friends with everyone like that. Anyway, that was a bunch of words that I just said. Let's get Jacob back up here. I've been Danny McCabe. Danny McCabe, everybody, give it up for him. Wearing a that '70s show sweater like nobody else. I'm just kidding. He's a, a, a modern man. Um, the fuck are you going? Do not call me the N word. All right, I, th I think I have a blank note card in my pocket. Write that down and give it to me, and then I can say it. Uh, it's called an end card, and I've been waiting for one for a long time. No, I don't want a black card. You've got to pay 28% interest on that. I want an end card. I saw the Batman movie. I know how this works. All right. Sometimes people don't believe. I do really good at black rooms. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It's I true. do great in black rooms. I just don't go to them because I like to keep all the stuff that's in my car in my car when I leave. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I didn't mean to offend you. 
Your next comic. Your next comic. What can I say about your next comic? Wow. He's such a bad performer that Colin left. He's a guy who... I feel bad. He's such a sweet guy. He's got a puppy's face. Your next comic. Your next comic is a puppy's face. He is continually trained by his girlfriend to be a good boy. In fact, if you go on Google reviews, you will find out what a good boy he is. Five stars, good boy. Your next comic. The epitome of femdom. Put your hands together. For, for Tyler Bauer. Welcome to hell! Welcome to hell! <laughs> Welcome to hell. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of what British people call cigarettes. I am not a fan of what British people refer to cigarettes as. It's extremely offensive to Jacob McFadden. <laughs> All right. My friend said to me the other day, uh, he said he didn't like watching horror movies because he doesn't like watching people die for no reason. It was Damien 10 minutes ago. Uh, Damien said he doesn't like watching horror movies because people die for no reason. But the thing is, they do give a reason in the horror movies. They're like, oh, you're a jock, kill him. You're having sex, kill them. He's black, kill him. <laughs> First, I guess. Kill him first. Just to drive the point home, uh, Trump, uh, he's already proposing a book ban. President Trump, he's already proposing a book ban. He's going to ban every book except for the Four Dummies series. <laughs> Four more years of this bullshit. Um. <laughs> I meant the shitty Trump jokes. Uh, why, why did people give uh, Pee Wee Herman shit for masturbating to porn in a porn theater? That's bullshit. That's what you're supposed to do at a porn theater. That's like getting banned from the swim, uh, from the water park for wearing swim trunks. I think he was done wrong, but I feel like that's all you could get canceled for back then uh, was mundane shit like masturbating to porn. The word of the day was come. Imagine if uh, Hitler had a man bun. That would have sucked. Nobody could have wore a man bun. If Hitler, it's probably the best thing he did was wearing that silly little mustache. You know, it's whatever. Uh, but imagine if Hitler did have a man bun. Then you just have a bunch of people walking around Carytown with silly mustaches. All right, uh, since it's just us for the rest of the set, I'm going to read the jokes that me and Monty wrote for the roast battle. On Thursday, me and Monty Giles are roasting uh, Jack Parker, Will Miner. I'm just going to read the, the uh, we'll see if they're funny. Will Miner looks like a guy that ties women to railroad tracks. Jack Parker looks like he's the one driving the train. <laughs> Jack Parker calls his love handles like handles because he's never loved anything in his life. Will Miner giggles when he comes. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jacob? I'm just doing the roast jokes. Uh, Will Miner shaves his mustache in the reflection of Jack's head and shaves his pubes in his ass. That's just juvenile. Jack and Will look like they belong on Confederate money. They call Will Miner the White R. Kelly because he pisses on them with his cock, not his dick. What does that mean? I can see you said white people say cock, they don't, okay. Um, that was not my joke. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, these, a lot of these suck. Jack and Will cosplay the movie Misery together. We're gonna lose. <laughs> if you combine their names, it comes out to Will Jacks Off Miners and a Parker, okay. <laughs> Yeah, alternatively, Jack and Will went up the hill to find miners in a parker. Okay, we're continuing with that. Uh, these are nursery rhymes. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack fucked Will with a candlestick. That'll kill at the funny bone. 
Jack sucks Will's dick with ice cubes in his mouth and calls himself Jack Frost. This is how we're gonna win. <laughs> Jack covered his head with Vicks Vapor Rub for Halloween and went as a cough drop. Okay, a lot of these suck. Will looks like a magician that pulled Jack's ass out of a hat. I don't know. Um, Jack likes to go bowling by that. He means Will sticks two fingers in his nose and his thumb in his mouth. That's sexual. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm done. All right, goodbye. Fucking millennials, he still had a minute left. Crazy. All right. Your next comment. I know this guy because he's always ready. He's always prepared. This guy, they call him Mr. Funny because you can hit him at any time, at any moment, and he's got jokes ready to go. It's Damien Anderson, Damien Anderson, Damien Anderson. Here we go, Damien Anderson, he's so ready. Woo! Damien Anderson. His family owned my family. That's why we're good friends, guys. It's good, 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 good. Hey, that's connection. Yeah, that's my nigga right there. You know what I'm saying? I know, perversion. I know. See, there's a reason for that. I know. I love it. I love white people because, like, I love it when white people be like motherfuckers or mfers because I know what y'all really want to say. What? Danny, what the fuck? Guys. <laughs> 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 Anyway, guys, I didn't expect to go up tonight. I'm just drunk. I'm just chilling. Anybody else having a good night tonight? We all having a good night tonight. Let's go through my undesirables. Why do old niggas like burning their mouth? Also, Jacob, you can answer this. Why do old niggas like Arby's? Do you like... I don't know, I like Arby's, it's good, it's good, uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not actually looking at my jokes, guys. I'm looking at ass on Instagram, it's pretty fucking great. Um, this is not even a bit, I'm just very concerned about our military right now, like for real. My cousin just got in the Marines, he's like on basic training right now. Both of them are actually, they're like my little brothers. Tyler knows him, Brandon knows him, you know. They're little shits, but they're like 18 now, so they're grown as adults, so, you know. But one of them, I don't know, one of them doesn't have his license yet, you know what I mean? And then, so, like, he asks for, like, rides and everything, and I get concerned, and I'm like, why are it, like, so, this nigga doesn't have his license, but they're, they're letting him in the Marines, like, this nigga's learning how to, like, work a gun before he learns how to work a car. Y'all should be way more concerned about this. They're letting SpongeBob ass niggas into the Marines. Like, that shit is fucking crazy. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's just crazy. Other than that, let's see what else I got. <laughs> I got hate. All right, yeah. So my Haitian cousins just got their own place, right? They just got their own place. I'm proud of them. And when I say that, I'm talking about like my eight different cousins that are probably gonna be deported soon. Like, you know what I mean? Cause Trump is president now. So like, they just got citizenship. They're working on citizenship. Like some of them got it, some of them, you know, you know. But they used to live with me. And like every time they'd run into me, they'd be like, hey, hey, damn y'all. Let me out. Where your girlfriend at? Where your where your girls at? Where your where your white bitches at? And I'm be like, yo, I don't I don't got nothing. I'm single. Like I'm chilling. I'm chilling. And they're like, oh, where where? And I'm like, yo, I just don't want a girlfriend right now. And I'm just thinking like, oh yeah, like they're actually trying to get to know me. They're actually trying to get to know me. You know what I'm saying? Like find rapport. We're finding like rapport that way. But then like the straight guy brain kicked into me. Like, and then I was like. Oh, these niggas think I'm gay. But even like, they either think I'm gay or I get no bitches. And I think getting no bitches is like worse than like thinking I'm like gay. 
Mainly because, like, if they think I'm gay, if they think I'm gay, it's like, all right, whatever, like. But if I, if they think I don't get no bitches, they gotta say, like, here's what happens if they think I'm gay. I'm like, no, nah, dude. No, like, trust me, I, I get bitches. Like, trust me. Like, no, word, 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 word. Like, and then they're like, all right, nah, this nigga's just weird, and he's, like, in denial. Like, you know what I mean? Like, ah. But if, like, if they think, if they think I don't get no bitches, then I'm just fucked. I don't know, guys, I'm fucking blacked out. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. At, all right. I have a story, guys, to tell y'all. I have a story. I have a story. I was just at like a movie premiere and everything, and it was like a girl I used to like romantically be involved with. And then it was in that moment I realized that, all right, first of all, I do talk to too many white girls. That is true. That is true. But I realized like that's how much of a nerd I am. Like I relate my love life to Spider Man because I have like three different girls with three different hair colors that like I'm romantically involved with. Like the redhead I met through some close friends. Bad bad for me, toxic for me, not good. The that's Mary Jane. The black haired, the black haired one, bad for me, toxic for me. That's black cat or cat woman for Batwoman fans or Batman fans. And then the blonde one, the blonde one just lived in a different state. So I consider her Gwen Stacy. But she lived in a different state, so she might as well be fucking dead. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Amen. Hey. Hey. That's how we do it. <laughs> Either way, guys. Jacob. I know. How's your team doing? What's your record? What's your, say it out loud. I'm a Dallas fan. Don't tell me to go fuck myself. I'm a fucked. <laughs> All right, give me it. Give it up for Damien Anderson, everybody. Give it up for Damien Anderson. I don't know if you guys listened to the words coming out of his mouth, but what I heard is that he's dating Mary Jane. And I think that's great. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, what'd he say? Let me see what I wrote down. Uh, ain't got no white bitches dating Mary Jane. Damn it, you ain't got no white bitches? No. But you dating Mary Jane. I don't date. Nah, you dating Mary Jane. That's cool. Um, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. <sighs> guys, we're down to our final two comics of the evening. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Look at Silver. Silver's falling asleep. <laughs> Silver, I've never seen you so unprofessional. <laughs> guys, we're going to get Silver a Red Bull. And we're going to finish the show off with our final two comics. Your next comic. <clears throat> Sorry, let me try that again as a man. Your next comic is a woman who I respect. Your next comic is the host of Stellar Comedy. I went to tonight. I loved it. I did not like that every comic decided to make me a central part of their set. That part sucked. That should be a rule. Jacob's not part of your set. But it did make me feel good inside. Your next comic, a very funny woman, very funny person, and someone that Damien could never land. Because he ain't got no white bitches. He's just got Mary Jane. Just me. Now I'm gonna tell Mary Jane Frenchy, you got her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send her that like 10 times tonight because I'm drunk. Put your hands together for Emily Erblin. Missionary. <laughs> Married guy in the back is doing you. You guys, you guys are doing missionary like right now. You fucking can't come on. 
Uh, no, you guys aren't that into the eye-to-eye -eye stuff. You know, I love you doesn't count during missionary. I love you doesn't count during missionary. You know, you get caught up in missionary on a first date, on like a fling sort of thing. It just slips out because you're looking at each other. It doesn't fucking count. You can control Z it. Uh, I, for one, don't do missionary. I never do missionary because I'm really serious about it. Uh, I can't come unless the other person actually does accept my religion. That's the point of missionary. That's the fucking point of missionary. You guys, um, it's been a difficult fall. It's been a difficult fall, I think. Uh, I went to the polls the other day. I had an awful time. No one was shaking ass. In the past, I go to the polls, there's bitches shaking ass. I bring my roll of dollar bills, they want my dollar bills. They're calling me pretty, they're calling me a pretty lady. It wasn't like my typical experience at the polls. Uh, you guys, it's football season. It's football season, time to toss the old pigskin. what they say. Uh, I'm not a big football fan, but I do know a thing or two about offensive lines. You know, like, is it in yet? You know. Your mom's a cunt. Your mom's a fat bitch cunt. Um, that, that's pretty offensive, I think. Um, yeah, your delivery was great. Pretty offensive. Pretty offensive. Uh... Down, someone hit it. I should commit more to that. I should commit more to that. Uh, I'd like to go back in time. I'd like to go back in time in the musical scene, but only like 10 or 15 years, everybody. I'd like to go back to the era when songs used to tell me how I should dance to them. You know, when song lyrics used to explicitly tell me how I should be moving my body along to the rhythm. I hear the first notes of the cha-cha slide, I turn off. It's automatic, I'm like a Tesla. That electric slide soothes me, that's right. Soldier Boy used to tell me what to do. You know, you know. That's right. That's right. Crank that. controversial in 2024 I don't think everyone at your average wedding can agree to slide to the left <laughs> or to the right for that matter I don't know it's pretty fucking controversial oh I'd like to go back in time uh, to the Stone Age I'll light up <laughs> I'll light up day or night anytime pass me the doobie uh, I'd like to go, thank you, I'd like to go back to the Bronze Age. <laughs> I like jewelry. I like fine jewelry. Uh, I've been thinking, what kind of age are we in now? What kind of age are we in now? And I do think this century, this millennia, is the age of liquids and goos. It's the age of liquids, goos, and slimes. We start... <laughs> we start off the century war on oil. Arguably the most important liquid, besides cum. Okay, second to cum. <laughs> most important liquid. Uh, you, remember, you remember all that slime bullshit on Nickelodeon? What was that? What was that? YouTube for like 10 years was just dominated by women selling different serums and slimes. <laughs> Immortality aiolis. <laughs> and I got thinking, I was like, you know, what was the inciting incident? What kicked off this era of sludge? 
You guys remember Monica Lewinsky? <laughs> you guys remember Monica Lewinsky? Anyway, give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden, everybody. He runs a fantastic open mic. Give it up for the juicy Emily Erblin. Can I tell you something? My mother, my mother, like a year ago, got a pair of pajamas with a juicy on the back, just like yours. My mother, by the way, the fact that my son has a crush on you, probably not related to the fact at all that you dress like my grandmother. Um, she bought a pair of Allure pajamas that said juicy, and it literally made me almost throw up in the backyard. <laughs> I was like, the fuck? You've got cancer, bitch. Like, you're not juicy at all. You're so dried out. My mother, I literally picked her up the other day in the scale. She weighs 87 pounds. Anyways, my father-in-law weighs 421 pounds, so I feel it bounces up. We are down to our final comic of the evening. Everybody, what a night we've had. But before we bring up your final comic of the evening, Thank you. What's going on with you two? Oh, I forgot. I, I brought the short cord. Very unprofessional. Tyler Bauer's fault. Um, hey. No, Red Hat. Hey, 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 Trump won. Let the man speak. He did win. If you want to object to America, you can go home. I know what that means. Anyways, my man, what do you want to say? I was going to say it's not her birthday. Oh, it is her birthday. Now, nah, fuck that. It is her birthday. And you know what? You should buy her whatever she wants. That's right. It trumps America. You buy her whatever she wants. I got her a red hat. You don't buy her a red hat. You buy her drinks. Hey, my man, you were here calling earlier. This guy knows about difficult women. All right. My man here knows about difficult women. Now, it's her birthday. And he doesn't want to buy her her drink. That's bullshit, right? Get her her drink. What do you want? What's your name? Chase. Your, no, his name is Chase. What's your name? Mary, like Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. What do you want to drink? Uh, tequila. You want tequila and you want top shelf, right? And because you already told me his name is Chase, I can go downstairs and do that. I'm an employee. So, your next comic is my cover for credit card fraud, I guess. I don't know. Chase, don't worry. She loves you tonight. And all that takes is a $43 shot of tequila. Is it worth $43? No. But I'm gonna go flip over some stones and get a worm, and we're gonna put it in there, and it's gonna be $43. Chase, look at her. Would you pay $43 for her? Chase, that's a rude question. No, I did not ask it. Anyways, your next comic. Does not deserve this intro. Your next comic is literally one of the nicest people I've ever met. She's the only comic in the city that my wife is like, I'd like to meet her without your bullshit in the middle. And I'm like, nah, not happening. I don't want you to find out what a good virtuous life is. Your next comic, a wonderful person. Everyone put your hands together for Nadine Donaghy. Well, I, I won't pretend that I was surprised to find out about Jacob's family situation. Uh, Jacob, to me, definitely has the energy of someone who disappoints a stepfather. <sighs> My parents are Catholic. They stay 
<laughs> or they promise to murder one another. <laughs> oh my God. True love. True love comes with a murder suicide pact. Uh, um, so I just came from a show in Waynesboro where I. Okay. Do you like Waynesboro? No. Okay, I was like so random. Oh, thank you. Uh, performed for a bunch of white, old, conservative married couples. And uh, by the time I went up, I was so salty that I opened with my abortion joke. <laughs> so what a time we had. <laughs> what a quiet set we had. <laughs> uh, you guys, it was a real nightmare. Fuck yeah! Yeah, it was fun. Um, uh, have you guys ever noticed? Oh, do you have something to ask me? No, I said I love you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, have you guys ever noticed that people say, what a fun age? but they only talk about ages that are like younger than working age. As soon as you get to an age where you get a job, no one describes that as a fun age anymore. Uh, I'm 33 and it's been a pretty fun age so far. I like it, 33. Um, it is the age where my skinny friend's metabolisms have finally slowed down. And that has been a joy to watch. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and now you get to suffer through what I've lived through every day since puberty. <laughs> um, you guys, Christmas is coming up. Do we like Christmas? We do. We like Christmas. Uh, I enjoy it. I like this season. It's fun. It's the season where I get to have a bunch of basic men tell me that their favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. Yeah. Whenever I hear that, I like to confuse them by telling them back that my favorite Christmas movie is The Godfather. And then when they're like, wait, really? I'm like, no, it's The Grinch, because I'm not dead inside. <laughs> um, uh, I actually really like giving gifts, so Christmas is a fun time for me. I love giving presents. I love to give gifts to people that I'm in relationships with. That's my favorite. Because I love the idea of that gift haunting that person after we break up. I'm like, we haven't been together in years, but I still like to think that maybe my ex's mom like puts up the stocking that I hand sewed for him. <laughs> and I just imagine him being like, Mom, what are you doing? And she's just like, you should have treated Nadine better. <laughs> I do, I like to haunt them. You know, speaking of ghosts, I think it's weird that there are people who believe in ghosts that are atheist. I feel like these people really want to have their cake and eat it too. <sighs> I'm trying to think, I am very tired. I've lost my train of thought, mostly. Uh, um, I, I've been talking to someone who, like, if we were to date, it would be long distance. Um, they live in, like, Washington State. And I was thinking about this the other day, and I was like, man, if I were to date this person, I would be, like, one-fourth closer to the International Space Station at any given moment than them <laughs> in their state that they live in. <laughs> Uh, so that's how desperate I've gotten. 33, mark the date. Um, uh, all right, I'm all done. Nadine Donaghy, everybody. Give it up for Nadine. Come on, give it up for Nadine, God damn it. Hey, Damien, lead a haka. Give, give a haka for Nadine. What? What? Never mind. All right, everybody. Hey, this has been comedy for Home Street Home. We're so grateful to have everybody. I'm losing my voice. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye.